right, everybody, welcome for another fantastic episode of Roundtable Live. My name is Bear Taffy, joined by Mathis Games, Northern Lion, and it is a, a great privilege to introduce you to the Getting Over It champion of the world, Rock Lee Smile. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your rigorous tr training regimen to join us on the podcast today, buddy. What a buddy. prestigious honor. Thank you so much for having me and for the lovely introduction. I'm glad to be here. It's pretty impressive stuff, man. A lot of people are trying, but a lot of people are failing to ascend wow. that great uh, mountain in the sky, and you've done... Pretty good job I, so far. I still haven't conquered Anne Orlando, so once I get there, we'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it, uh, getting over it a little bit more in the show today. Hey, everybody. It's time for Roundtable Live, uh, a collection of stories and accounts of video game playing by, by four fellows that you may like a little bit. I hope. I hope you've come to at least enjoy some of our content uh, by or this point. Or tolerate us in some way. <laughs> Mostly. Started watching us years ago and just <laughs> figure it's too much work to stop at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, along those lines. I know there's other quality podcasts out there, but it's like I've already put 102 episodes in. I think I've committed at this point. <laughs> well, we tried to pick a point where there were no other podcasts happening. Right, so and then another podcast started happening at this time. So, you know, fuck us, and I no. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can but we I, remove the unsubscribe button via CSS? Um, just hide it. Because that it. seems like a masterful way to win. Yeah. That's a good idea. You can disable the back button, which I know users really, really like when you do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was well, that well? You you put like a little a little pop up window that says like, "Wait, you haven't finished downloading all this porn that yeah. you're watching on this website right <laughs> well, now." Well, what you're actually supposed to do is as soon as they load the page, just refresh it 80 times so that when they hit the back button, it only takes them back to the 79th instance. Right. <laughs> Lots of ad views that way. It works out really well for everybody. It's a preview that, of the future. So yeah. that anyway. Twitch, oh, that Twitch ad money. Mm -hmm. Speaking of uh, previews into the future of capitalism, hey, let's talk about Shadow of War's loot boxes <laughs> at the start of the show today. That's going to be a fun conversation. Uh, and that's basically it for the news. Not a lot going on. I was telling these guys, this is like, this is the uh, the calm before the storm of the holiday season. We're going to have a bunch of these huge releases coming up, like near the end of October, and then obviously like through to Black Friday and to Christmas, all that stuff is going to get crazy. Uh, but now we're just getting mad at D Warner Brothers for being shitty again, so that's, that's like the extent of it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, game we mentioned just a little bit ago, Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy, which is uh, available now as part of the Humble Bundle, right? The Humble Monthly. But, but you can't buy it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so You had to have purchased it before today. Yeah. And by purchase, you mean subscribe to the Humble Monthly subscribe Bundle. Subscribe to the Humble Monthly. Because yeah. now that it's out, you can no longer subscribe to the one that's come out. So right. Correct. You're just bone until December. But we'll tell you about I it. Feel, you know what it reminds <laughs> me of is in uh, – and I like the Humble Monthly service. And I understand why they do this because they don't want people to just wait to see what's in it and then yeah. buy it. Yeah, because it yeah. kind of undermines the business model. But it reminds me of the, the eBay store from 40-Year-Old Virgin where the – like Jonah Hill walks in and he's like, I want to buy these boots. And she's like, well, you can't buy the boots. The oh, boots right. are on eBay. I'm just holding them <laughs> until I sell them on eBay. I forgot uh, about speaking that. Speaking of random services, I don't know if you guys saw, but IndieBox is not doing their subscription service anymore. Really? Yeah. Well, what are they done. doing now? Uh, they haven't really announced it yet. From my understanding, like they're working on maybe doing like uh, just eventual, like just occasional individual just uh, purchases of, of, a, of an yeah. indie game that's boxed, but the subscription yeah. service, which is a shame because I freaking love that service. The that way they phrased it, it sounded like they were switching to like an a la carte model. Like maybe you can just buy them individually when you want yeah, one. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. You know, that, I mean, honestly, that might work better. Not, not to get on too much of a tangent with this here, but like I, I kind of look at that as like if you offered a premium bundle of these indie games that would otherwise never exist, that's a unique enough service to where I think there might be enough market for it, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway. Uh, more about the docket today. We're going to be talking not just about getting over it with Bennett Foddy, uh, but also Warhammer End Times Vermintide, which uh, came out a couple of years ago, but uh, quite a few of us got a chance to check that out recently, so we're going to spend a few minutes on that. Finally got our first-hand experience with uh, the new Battle Royale mode from Fortnite, so we'll talk a little bit more in depth there. Uh, I checked out Battle Chasers Night War, which is way better than the name indicates. I know, it doesn't sound like it's all too much, but I promise, it's pretty great. Uh, stick Fight the Game, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. A Hat in Time, uh, self-described cute-as-heck 3D platformer featuring a little girl who stitches hats for wicked powers. 
arrowheads on the show today as well. <laughs> Golf story. We're going to revisit Cuphead. We feel it does deserve it. And then a long, lengthy, hearty conversation about our September game of the month. It's already time for that one as well, man. It's going quickly by. But uh, let's go ahead and start yeah. off. Let's just start off by getting angry. How about that? Let's, sure. all, let's just get in a bad mood right away. I just like... Oh, fucking just Warner Brothers, man. Launch it like, off, I man. Like, go. Like, like, I don't understand. Like, Do they have like a team of five that sits around a table and goes, all right, we fucked up our goodwill last time by paying YouTubers to give us positive press when the game was good anyway. Yeah. We can't do that again this year, so how are we going to fuck it up uniquely this time? I know. People hate loot boxes. Let's make them as bad as they've ever been in a full-priced game. It's is it the board of directors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More or less. God, man. Like, you had a great game last year, and people were so cautious about it because you're like, let's just hawk money at, at, at people and make them say it's great. And the contract was so bizarrely strict and, and weird and uh, basically blow smoke up the butts of Warner Brothers, please. Mm -hmm. So this year, it's like, yeah, well, we can just cut to the chase. We don't need YouTubers this time around. Let's just fuck our own game. Let me let me establish the foundation so folks have a point of reference here A as few well. years ago, Ryan. I apologize. <laughs> Yo, I mean, it was, it was 2014. <laughs> it was a Whenever different time, it man. Whenever it was. Time flies. Mm -hmm. when you yeah. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about as far as that's concerned, back in the day when uh, Shadow of Mordor first launched, Warner Brothers did indeed pay YouTubers and not disclose that they were paying YouTubers to promote the game and say positive things about it. So there was a whole Beyond controversy that, around that. They also only gave it to people who signed the deal, mm -hmm. yeah. which is actually just super weird because a lot of people, not naming names like, you know, myself, were like, hey, I'd really like to play this game. It looks cool. Uh, can I get a review copy? Well, we can sponsor you, but you can't just have a review copy. Yeah. All, all right. This is also the same company that you're like, hey, I'd love to play this game. Can I get a copy? Like, well, we can send you a physical box copy for the PS4 only. <laughs> yeah, that's also... <laughs> It'll arrive yeah. in two to three months. <laughs> we do not give out Steam codes. They yeah. might be different now. I actually don't know, but... Maybe they use those as ways to get no's back from YouTubers, like as a sort of a point of contention where like, oh, well, maybe they just won't do one if we offer this. Mm. But then we can say we offered one. Maybe. <laughs> just a thought. <laughs> I didn't think about it that way, but yeah. Um, well, yeah, that was what they did before. That's not even what we're talking about today. Uh, the, the new release, Shadow of War, which just came out today? Or was it yesterday? It was really recently. Comes out in four days. Oh, it's, it's not, not out yet. yet. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, so there yeah. you go. Uh, Shadow of War, the, the reviewers, though, are getting their hands on it, and we're starting to learn a lot more about how the loot boxes and the microtransactions within this actually work. Uh, there was one big glaring issue that uh, I caught wind of a couple days ago uh, that apparently is uh, not actually as bad as I thought it was originally. Uh, what I what heard, what I had heard, was that legendary graded gear was only available in the loot boxes via microtransactions in the game, which, you know, you hear that, you don't even really need to understand a lot else about it to hear that and think, oh, that's pretty fucked up. Uh, luckily, that's not apparently the case. I can't really clarify much more beyond the fact that that's apparently just not true. Uh, but what is true is there is a post-end game mode after you beat the main campaign called Shadow Wars. And apparently the true ending for the game, you know, the quote, true ending, is locked behind that mode, and the only way to get through that is either to grind a hell of a lot through the course of the end game to be able to get enough in-game currency slash soldiers, orcs, what have you, to be able to uh, meet the needs of this mode, or quick version, microtransactions. Just buy a bunch of boxes, you get your orcs right away, you get all the supplies, and then you're good to go. So it's a shortcut mode that is, you know, obviously made very enticing just by the very design of the thing. So. That's sort of where the issue is rooted right now, is the fact that this is in-game content, not quite well behind the microtransactions, not quite a paywall, but they're towing that line. And yeah. you know they're towing that line. It's, it's almost like, I mean, from what I've read from the reviews, it, it feels like it's a single-player game that then has like a free to play mobile game sort of thing tacked on to the end. Right. Like you, you have your normal semi linear campaign followed by like a, a persistent sort of higher level strategy game that's kind of like 
Fire Emblem Heroes or something like that, where the microtransactions actually give you, uh, I, I don't want to necessarily say a leg up, but they give you accelerated progress and maybe also an advantage. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's like, that's that's the issue now that's become, <clears throat> excuse me, it's become so prevalent is that system that works in free-to-play games, we know it works in free-to-play games because that's the entire way they make their money and that's why that me method is sustainable, has just, it slowly <laughs> creeped its way. It's that damn frog in the boiling pot again, man. And we're the frog. We're always the frog. We I, can't stop. I was told that the caveat to that example is that apparently the frogs were lobotomized, so mm. take that metaphor as you will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. No. Don't don't really. Um, <laughs> what you're saying essentially they also locked the actual ending to the game behind a pseudo paywall. Yeah, and like yeah. the the immediate counter argument I I would suspect to that is it's just the true ending. You know, like you don't have to see the true ending. Yes, you do. Are you kidding me? Have you ever played Not a game? You're you Northern have Lion. to see it. No, this uh, is actually like I've been of the opinion that I'm probably going to play it anyway because I really liked uh, Shadow of War and I thought Shadow, Shadow of, of Mordor. Oh, sorry, I really like Shadow of Mordor and I thought Shadow of War looked like an improvement in pretty much every way. And like the them selling a DLC crate, the whole like charity, maybe they're mining the charity for profit situation. I wasn't necessarily fully abreast of the issue, but also was relatively unoffended once they clarified it. But then like now that all the reviews have come out and people have started being like it's actually genuinely deleterious to have these loot boxes in the game i'm like that's just enough knocks for me to not really feel like i need to get it this yeah. is not to mention this is not the season i feel for you to be able to make this play as warner brothers like there are way too many other games coming out right now you're in you're in the like thick of it as far as late year releases go now people have way too many options to be pulling this shit i feel and maybe not, maybe the vast majority of their uh uh customer base is not really going to be aware of this sort of stuff or will just not really care all that much but it's starting to get closer to the point where it's just gonna like it that, i think what happened with nba 2k 18 this year was that they crossed the line and you saw <laughs> God, the yeah. immediate response, right? Like, mm. and that's what I feel is going to happen with every game that just keeps trying to push it further and further and further and further. This isn't quite there, but I really think this is like right on that edge where if they did something like, I think if the legendary gear was actually locked behind the boxes, that would be like, okay, fuck that. We're all sick of it at this point. And I'm, I'm pretty damn sure they're just right up on that edge. They're edging it. They're edging those... Those gamers till they can pop their rage cherries. Oh, I, I, I got. I, I, I'm going to take that one back. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk that way. <laughs> happened. <already. laughs> well, I just think like I, I actually agree 100 percent with what you're saying. Is that there's so many games that unless like people who really like the first one, I can totally see wanting to play this because I was in the same camp. Super fans of like Lord of the Rings or Monolith Studios, I can see wanting to play this as well. But for everybody else, I'm like, there's. So many games, the cardinal sin is just giving a lot of people a bullet point for why they should ignore it and play something else. Right. So, right. I mean, time will tell, I guess, how this actually affects them on a commercial level. I don't know. It seems like it, it could, but for now, uh, I, I think for me, it just it's dampened my enthusiasm to pretty much zero. I'm like, there's way too many things to play right now that, you know, why why would I willfully possibly put myself on the treadmill of buying an $80 game in Canadian dollars at least, and then also potentially buying microtransaction loot boxes afterwards. I'm, I'd be curious if like 2K actually got smacked financially, outside of like bad reviews. Uh, I wonder if 2K actually like felt a financial punishment for crossing that line. Oh, for 2K18, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for NBA, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm also curious. Like I know for a damn fact without even looking up stats that it's sold fine you know like they had yeah. for god's sake i saw in the playstation store they have an entire you know how they have the listing on the left side when you open up that store yeah. you got like new featured listed things like that there is an entire category nba 2k18 i've never seen that before for any other game it's like oh my god by the way here's five versions of this for you to buy plus microtransactions like they they're doing fine i'm sure i'm still sure so that's you, not do much you think to hope that for. We're, are we at the point now where we just kind of can all agree across the board that as consumers, we just have to say this is wrong objectively 
if you know better, there's no reason to encourage this behavior. And having the opposite point of view that like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, no, it does. Yeah. Are we all in agreement now? I, I is- hope so. Yeah. Like, well, this that's where it's gotten me, honestly, because I recognize that this has become like, weirdly enough, a, a repeated topic almost over the course of the last couple of the months of the show. And I firmly believe that's because these publishers, like I said, are they're they want to see how far they can go. So I, yeah. I feel like we almost have a duty here to be like, this is it. <laughs> Please hold on. Stop it now. This no more. B- dial it back almost actually a little bit because we don't want you to do any more of this shit. I think yeah. it's I, the only like devil's advocate I would play is that I think it's fine and free to play games. Like yeah. if, if Fortnite BR has loot boxes. 100% fine I'm with that. Pretty much okay with it depending on how they implement it. But it's the, the practice of like we're going to have a single player game that's also full priced and then there's going to be loot boxes inside of it. Like, I think it's lame in the first place to have single-player games that then have uh, the ability to buy, like, items that are overpowered or experience boosts that, like, lessen the amount of time it takes to actually beat the single-player. Because it it seems at that point, like, the monetization on top of the game has influenced the game design in such a way that it, it's not, like, a pure experience for the free player anymore. Who's not even a free player. They, they paid full price for the game right. in the first place. But then, like, for for it to be a full price game and then have microtransactions after the fact that could have good in-game loot in them is, like, absurd. Mm-hmm. On that same note, I see this PR talking point from, like, the publisher's side of things all the time, where they they phrase it, or, like, they put it in that perspective like you did, and they say, see, these people, it's compared, it's it's comparable to someone who's looking for an easy mode in the game. You know, like some people like the challenge, some people like to just enjoy the content that's there without having too many barricades. And I'm like, yeah, that's why you make an easy mode. That's not why you put loot boxes into it. That's not why you give them a financial shortcut. That's not what they're looking for. But that's the way they spin it a lot of the time, I feel. Or I see, anyway. Like, I, I literally read that. Well, and beyond that, like, on the one hand, being able to buy, like it, when Capcom released Devil May Cry 3 on Steam, you could like buy HP orbs at like $2 a cash, basically. Right. I mean, do you remember fucking Mortal Kombat paid easy finishers? Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, was that WB as well? Nether Realms is developer, was it? but is that Nether? Is that WB? I think, I think so, yeah. Oh, my God. But it's no, just it like, sense. at least, like, that's bad, in my opinion, because they already paid for the game and if they can't beat it and you want to give them an easy mode you should just give them an easy mode because they already paid for it but then to be like there's loot boxes with a variable chance to get something that you might actually want is substantially worse because i I think Mm. like without being like oh won't somebody think of the children i think it like short circuits human psychology for a lot of people that you know they see that i would never pay 250 for that item but i will buy like ten two dollar loot chests for a chance to get that item because of the you know the flashing lights when you click on it and the you know the sound of the Hearthstone announcer going oh legendary mm-hmm. you know yeah. you know it really pisses me off actually that what Bear said is really right on they soften the language to try and give themselves cover so they don't seem like they're doing anything deceptive or manipulative you know they're just coming up with a way to make everything more accessible and it's it sounds lovely coming out of their mouth the way it does. Yeah, no, they always phrase it like... they're lying to you. Yeah. They're just making up shit so they don't have to feel bad. They're just getting your money. They don't give a shit about you. Right? Lo- so can we agree that that's what the point is and stop giving them cover? I think so at this point, yeah. And that's like exactly like you were saying. Like They love to use that language like some gamers prefer it this way. Like They're looking out for the folks that can't get I've, through it the hard way I've, and would just like the the pay to win please i've also seen the the freaking defense that like well games are expensive to make more expensive than they've ever been and this is their way of recouping yeah. their costs i mean maybe this is too maybe this is really reductive of me but like my response is how about you just lower the budget of the game that's what i've been saying since <laughs> i started doing youtube man not, not you. so for indie games that's it is reductive like if, the only, if but... the only way you can recoup your cost though is by putting gambling loot boxes in your game it's You've time to reassess your budget yeah. but no, no 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 but the other thing is that like games and without being like comically anti-consumer 
right. games have cost sixty dollars since like the year two thousand. So and, you know, bump like up the purchase price by ten bucks. But the thing is, if you bump up the price by ten bucks, people are gonna freak out. So this is a way of them kind of like making more on the long tail while Trojan horsing like a low price in to begin with. I I don't know, man. Like I really think it has it has a lot less to do with how much the games cost and it has a lot more to do with how much they feel they can make like yes. they are much more driven by the idea of higher profits than they are by the idea of offsetting costs like do we do we think at some point that gambling laws are gonna get smacked down on these things because of the way that they put, it's like give it's, the loot boxes and, and all that other nonsense i think it's worth considering yeah like it, it's it it's, it's genuinely down is on, a gambling like marketplace. Third party sites before with CS:GO stuff and, and whatnot, but I'm curious if eventually that stuff's going to step in, and the laws are eventually going to catch up with what's going on, and then this won't be. It's. Well, I would like to see like bad. I'd like to see some form of regulation. force regulation. I mean, yeah. yeah what, what I say every time is just put the uh, put the drop rate on the loot box. Yeah. If you yes. put the drop rate on the loot box, I think that's like. That's the bare minimum, but that would also probably be enough for me. If, that's like getting like, you lottery into, odds. Exactly. When you go into a casino, like the slot machine has the odds on the side of the machine. And, yeah. You know, it's up to you to to look at it and be like, "Ooh, that doesn't really seem right." But like, I'm not going to put my money there. But for now, like, Battlegrounds is one of the worst offenders for it, where literally it's three layers of abstraction. They give you like a big grid of stuff that you could earn. And then they're sorted by color, which is rarity. And you don't know, like, common items could drop 99% of the time. And then, you know, epic items could drop 0.5% of the time. Legendaries could drop, like, 0.01% of the time. At least having the ability to inform consumers. If they looked at it and they were like, oh, there's, like, a 1 in 20 chance to get a legendary because they see 20 items. If instead it was like, oh, it's a 1 in 200 chance, they... I think that would stop a lot of people or at least put the onus on them for having the ability to make an informed decision and choosing to take the risk anyway. Mm -hmm. It's so weird to me still to think just how much of a gray area we're all still living in legally, like every day of our lives. Like <laughs> this, not just, you know, like the, our, our jobs, of course, being YouTubers, it's all very weird and up in the air, but just like the video game industry is still not really regulated in the same ways that many other entertainment industries are. We're all still kind of operating almost under the radar a little bit and we're able to get away with this kind of stuff as a result of it. So it's it's interesting to maybe uh, consider how that might develop now that the uh, big how names we, are getting huge. How are we going to shoehorn loot boxes into cinema experiences? <laughs> <laughs> you go oh, you, you're talking about the super ticket. <laughs> Where when, before, when you see the trailer just before a movie, it goes, if you want to watch the movie that you, you're already about to watch, go buy a super ticket, and then you get like a discounted version of the Blu-ray when it comes out. <laughs> I haven't even seen the movie yet. I, I went and saw it, and I was shocked to find out they are actually selling two tickets, the normal ticket and then the super ticket, which unlocks the true ending. So I was, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> I didn't that's know I was that's not do that. true. Right? Like that, just to avoid slandering. <laughs> no, uh, it's not true. No, you get the okay. super ticket and you get to see maybe an after credit scene. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if you're lucky. Yeah. Twenty five percent chance. Right, right. Uh, all right, yeah. So like I, I really was like when I when I started reading about this uh middle of the week and I was hearing that they had that legendary gear paywall, that was just I was not happy at all with that I, I need to know more about it so i'm gonna i'm gonna read up on that too but still just not looking oh, good man right, fucking right. wb and it was wb uh behind mortal yeah, of Kombat course it as was well. with mortal Kombat. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. freaking instant fatality coins or whatever the hell it was <laughs> i, I, so I fucking remember us all getting so upset about that a couple years we ago we probably too. were like is this the line <laughs> <laughs> two years later sure. no no but well, now we oh, gotta figure out how to how man. to shoehorn loot crates into our podcast oh dude you, you know, know we well, bring, the guy you like uh, we bring Twitch back prime subscriptions that give you <laughs> right oh, Nick's weird games or something <laughs> every month you know you only get to see Nick's weird games if you subscribe the guy i uh, pardon me for forgetting your name but he made us that uh app for unlocking our emotes via loot boxes remember that he, he oh yeah that, that free like 100. that free like mobile app mm -hmm. you can just click on go go download uh uh, uh you know what I'm going to look it up right now. I, I think I've got it on my phone here. I'm pretty sure I got it on my phone. We've got to give him a proper shout-out. Box-a-moat, that's what it was called. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. 
by B I by Neo Sid. There you go. I remembered. Okay, sweet. It's got a nifty little jingle too. Uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, Nick, please tell me all about getting over it with Bennett Foddy. This is like the most blue ball. I was like ready to launch into about six different arguments through that whole thing. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> But it's fine. I, I don't want to take oh, this too far down well, the wrong. Do you have any? Is there any one thing you want to address before we take off from this? Because there is a lot I to it. I want. Well, okay, there's like five, but I All want right. to say that I want us as consumers to understand that we need, deserve, and need to be treated respectfully from these people that we are giving our money to. Yeah. And I find it personally just wrong that they feel okay with the, the way that they handle this. There's so much more time we could be spending on actually making cool stuff and having better conversations that isn't just wasting it with this nonsense of like, oh, we shouldn't be lied to today. Oh, we shouldn't be taken advantage of. Like, I know this is such a nonsense argument when there are such bigger problems in the world, but this is our little corner of the world. And it means a lot <laughs> to me not protect to be treated it. like shit by people, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That's important. Mm -hmm. Have a little respect and then don't be lied to. Don't be taken advantage of and don't encourage this stupid behavior. Here, here. That's really what I want out yeah. of all of this. Absolutely, man. No, I'm, I'm with you. It's it's like I said. Like I, I Normally, I don't think I really am all that up in arms about this kind of stuff. But we are, we are at the point where I feel we have to draw our defenses at this point. So, yeah. Uh, but right. want to talk about something a little happier? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so getting uh, over it, getting over it with Ben Andy is a new absurdist nihilist uh, cauldron platformer. That's a genre <laughs> now. Now it is uh, physics platform, I should say, where you play as a man in a cauldron uh, who controls a large sledgehammer. You actually play as the sledgehammer. The man is just vestigial and attached to the sledgehammer, if you can believe that. And uh, it's a physics game where you try and ascend the mountain by wedging the sledgehammer in appropriate places to launch yourself up into the sky, hopefully in a better position than you were before you launched. And uh, the crux of it all is you will lose all your progress over and over again. And the way that the level design is set up, if you make a mistake, you might slip back to another earlier checkpoint. And then if you make another mistake, you could find yourself very easily all the way back at the beginning of the game. Or if you're particularly inept or unlucky, you may find yourself at the tutorial just to, you know, turn the dagger a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, I know this sounds like an awful idea in theory. <laughs> However, in practice, it's my new obsession uh, for much the same reason that I hate to do it. I'm going to commit the absolute sin of... <laughs> oh, I can't let it leave my lips. <laughs> well, now you can. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's like Dark Souls. Oh, oh no. Oh, I oh, said no. it. Yeah. You lose progress, but when you get rewarded, it feels so good. That's what I mean. <laughs> so can we say this is the Dark Souls of Cauldron Platform? <laughs> yes, and I've been saying that. <laughs> He's been saying that for years. <laughs> because I mean it's it, hard. ironically, it feels good when you make progress, and that's very much the same uh, experience that I loved about Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's not like Dark Souls at all, other than that. Um, I've just loved it. I've played this for about 15 hours this week at the behest of all the games I haven't finished, like Cuphead, like Hob. You know, the, my game of the month, I still haven't played as much as I've played this game mm -hmm. because it just feels so good. Um, it's a very particular, very odd type of way that this game is controlled. And, I mean, how many other games have you played as a hammer? It's not a thing you do very regularly. You control the whole game with just the mouse. And I've developed, like, I don't know, five different techniques for movement in this game. Please address them by name. All right. Well, I mean, your typical <laughs> circles, flailing, uh, spinning your arms like this, right. clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, there's ovals that are more oblong oh, and yeah. ovals that are more vertically oriented. Sure. There's Pac-Mans, of course, oh, which are ones that are like a, an oval but with a divot in it. Oh, right, yeah, of Those course. Those are used for building uh, strength, essentially, because you can... Not only can you swing your arms, but you can also bring them away and toward your body. Um, and in that act, you also generate some lift and, and speed and power. Torque, as you will. Sure. Um, I don't know if you mentioned uh, this is by the creator of Quop also. Yes. So that is yes. important to note. Uh, okay. A master mm -hmm. of different control scheme methods. Yes. Um, he's now made a new one, essentially. Um, and this is paid a homage of a, another game called Sexy Hiking, which technically is the one that really originated 
uh, the idea of climbing a mountain with a hammer. So, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a re Give credit where credit is due there. Well, now I wish I could buy it on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> Too yeah. bad. Just wait. Um, so I, I've played this for 15 hours, and in the last, I would say, mm, eight, ten hours of it, I haven't made much more than about five feet of progress. And yet, that was enough to be fulfilling. Um, I got to this cliff, and it's like literally a difficulty wall. Mm -hmm. You climb up this cliff, and beyond that is an even steeper wall. And beyond that, I don't know yet what's beyond that, because nobody has found out until the game is just released today uh, for Humble Bundle subscribers. So maybe now people know, but I don't know yet. I'm just... I, it's an, it's entrancing to watch, man. I, I, I'm starting yeah. to understand... <laughs> like... Uh, you can it's lose. both easier and harder to play than it looks. I, I don't know how to describe it better than that. It's just mm. a very odd, entrancing, hypnotizing game to play. It's such a unique idea, man. Like, so that do you know anything about that uh, sexy hiking game that came? It came out of like two thousand two, right? And apparently had very, very similar mechanics. Yeah, it's essentially the same concept. It just was a two D game with. Uh, it was sort of a clip art looking guy with a pseudo 3D hammer that was turned into sprites. I mean, this is actually 3D now and well, 2D, 3D, mm -hmm. um, 2D, 3D, 3D, 3. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know much about it beyond just that I've played it and it was essentially the same concept. Mm -hmm. Man, it's, it's got a cool look to it as well. I mean, just maybe that goes without saying for how unique in presentation it is, but just some MC Escher shit going on, you know? I like it. Yeah, it's very absurdist. And, and the whole th theme of it is when you fall down, it'll play music and make fun of you. And mm -hmm. there's <laughs> philosophical musings and quotes by Nietzsche and all kinds of stuff like that. Right. So. Is there like some super big secret at the top of the mountain or something? That's, uh, he, that's when you... And I thought he said on his Twitter, there's a huge reward for when people make it to the top. But of course, that's what you're going to say. And it uh, might just be a, a picture of something. Peter Mall, new joke. Peter Molyneux yeah. joke. Just or No Man's Sky joke. That in there. Yeah. Go to the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. I hope it's something like you get to the top and it's the tutorial again or something. Like, that would be fine. <laughs> um, the experience is all just about getting better at it mechanically, and it's not really about much else. Just feels good to play. Mm -hmm. What's the lore? What do you think? Oh, I've made up all the lore. I don't. There isn't any real lore, I don't think. His name's Dylan in your world. I know that much. Yeah, his name's Dylan. He's a half-human, half-hermit crab hybrid, mm -hmm. and uh, his dung has outgrown the cauldron, so he seeks a higher, <laughs> bigger cauldron at the top of the mountain. That's what's he's up the there. Of, okay. He's the son of Odin. Nice. Uh, he has a hammer imbued by the gods. I mean, we're just... It's nonsense. The whole game is just nonsense rambling, and I love it. You know what would be sick is if... Like when you get to the top, you break free of the cauldron, and then the real game starts there. Mm -hmm. It's like a Fez situation for sure. That'd be sweet. I'm all I mean, about the that. Guy in the original game didn't have a cauldron, but I assume that was largely to uh, facilitate the physics to make more sense, since his legs are probably a little in the way. You know what? Uh, I've actually yeah. I know now what it is. You've put the pieces together in my head for me. You get up there, get out of the cauldron, then it's quap. <laughs> you start a co-op run Continue as soon as you get out of the college you just arms. gotta keep going yeah exactly that's cool as hell mm -hmm. i made a discovery yesterday i don't know if you guys saw but if you go left instead of right and fall into the water every time you do it the normals start to reverse on the character's torso more and more until he's this hulking fucking cthulhu flesh monster yeah, yeah that was that was fun you to see. inside out turn inside out and then you can keep playing you just can't see your hammer very well I gotta see if I can oh. find that. That was on your. That was like a couple days ago, wasn't it? On your stream. No, it was literally last night. Oh, it was last night. Okay, hold on. Let me yeah. see if I can. I was find playing until like midnight after the NLSS, like another five hours. Yeah. I played. Jesus. That was looking pretty. Nuts. Yeah, and I made I made almost no progress in the entire five hours, and then I still had a great time. <laughs> I wish this dude needs to send me a code. I want to see this game now. I want to try it out. I really want, like, yeah, it, it looks like, I, well, you, Ryan, you described it's, it as something like one of the best one-time games you'll ever play on the show or something like that. Yeah, uh, I think someone on the on the subreddit called it that, like one of the best one-offs. And then we mm. played it the next show. So <laughs> it probably made, made it look a little silly. But no, like, I, I think it's really, really fun. It's like a combination of absurd and really funny and also incredibly like you you do learn how to move as you play even though it looks silly there's like nick's talking about techniques he's on like another 
IQ level versus where I am. But mm. even still, like the first 30 minutes I played it, I was just doing circles. And then you're like trying to hook an edge so you can pull yourself up. And then when we, uh, you know, get to the point where you're getting like intermediate level difficulty you like put the hammer straight down and then push your arms up like some kind of you know eastern european gymnast to try to start to maneuver <laughs> through the devil's chimney and it's uh it's it's actually like really rewarding mm -hmm. i think i don't i don't have the appetite to play it for 15 hours like nick i'll tell you that straight up right what i might be able to do is play it an hour a week for 15 weeks That's is it uh is it, it officially comes out in december yeah, December sixth yeah. or something like that. December. But the game yeah, is done. It's gonna be eight bucks. It's done, and I've been playing it. Yeah, it's, it's out now. Uh, on, that's the on, thing. On. By the time it rolls around in December, I just won't give a shit anymore. Oh, you will, man. Wow. He's, he's still gonna be playing it fifteen hours a day, so you'll want to know. If you haven't, all right. If you haven't beat, if if any, if Nick, you haven't beaten it by December, then I'll jump in. <laughs> <laughs> if I haven't beaten it by December, I need to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need to be off the that's show. Is terrifying. that what you're saying? You lose your I gamer credentials. Okay. Well, the the reason it's coming out later on steam is because it's it was like <laughs> it's under the humble label it's That's like your humble like yeah. oh is it humble well, you can't buy it on humble store right like it's a humble just... original okay yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. it was financed to some degree by them or published by them at the very least to be in the bundle Got but it. you could only get it up to today and now there's like another month and a half two months where you can't get it that's that's too big of a gap correct but it's i mean like that's it, yeah. but there, it's marketing for the bundle I get that, and I understand. I, I mean, I see that aspect of it, but like waiting till December, not even giving it next month in November. But if they did, if they gave it on Steam too early, Humble gets less of the the cut as opposed. Like if they just release it on Steam, you'd be like, why would I ever buy now, a, a bundle with an original in it? But now I can't. But now the bundle's done. I can't get the Correct. game. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's it, no, it's there's the, no, there's it's no the, like, point. It's the eBay store thing. I recognize yeah. that it's a little absurd. <laughs> like I get like... it. I get it. Keeping exclusive up until the bundle is done, and then maybe giving like two weeks of exclusivity. But now two and a half or whatever months of just being able to buy it not on Humble Store or Steam. That's They're like, selling what's the you point? on the concept ahead of time, not so much the actual product. Because ideally, you wouldn't have even known this was in the bundle, right? However, Bennett told everyone so. I, I don't follow I don't know how it works either. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea it was in a bundle until today. Yeah, and it's too late. But if you put it on the humble store, it tells people they don't need, need to, to buy the bundle. Get the bundle yeah. or the monthly specifically because they could just pick the one game they want a la carte like a week later or something. So why not wait like a month and then put it on the humble store? Wait, they're saying it's in the trove. What does that mean? I have no idea. What is the trove? You know oh my god, trove? what the hell is the trove? It's another right. humble thing. Listen, I'm just gonna say this right now, humble fucking calm down. Too much <laughs> shit. You've got Stop way it. too much stuff going on. Is, I had no oh, idea okay. this was even in the subscriber bundle until the subscriber bundle was already done. If you buy the next bundle, you get Trove access and can download it. What the fuck is the Trove? Oh, so they do give you an out, though. If you, okay. if, if you pay for another bundle later, you can get something from this bundle. Is that it? This is kind of too complicated. I That's what look, I said. I too much Humble, too much shit. Give me like two options. Discover a treasure service, trove of games. Individual purchases. In addition to a curated bundle of our favorite games each month, Humble Monthly subscribers have access to our full catalog of Humble Originals and other DRM free oh, games. Oh, because it's a Humble Original. Yes. So they are you can offering still get it. the originals so, and more is what it's So if I, I sign up for whatever trove is, I which is no, if you sign if you subscribe to the monthly, you get access to the to trove. The tr it's additional. And that game is in the trove. Correct. Correct. Because it's an original. Okay. So you can go to humblebundle.com slash monthly okay. slash trove and subscribe for $12 and you will unlock oh, access okay. to getting over it with Bennett Foddy along with such other titles as Gone Home, Limbo, uh, Keyboard Sports, Trine, Volgar the Viking, and more. Gotcha. What about Trove? Is Trove in the Trove? Trove is not in there. Not in the Trove. No. Damn it. Is, is this game worth $12? In but your you're not. Humble opinion. You're not getting it for twelve dollars. I know you're getting. You're getting a bunch of stuff. I personally would be buying this subscription literally just for this game. That is all I would be buying this thing for. I don't care about the bundle. But the you also care. get Shadowrun Returns, Alan Wake's American Nightmare, Amnesia: The Dark Descent. So the next month includes Quake Champions, The Elder Scrolls Online, and The Elder Scrolls Legend. I hear that's a good card game. I haven't played it. Legends, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm. Okay, have we clarified this point? 
I think I get I, it. Okay. Every time somebody would ask me, how do I get this game that you're playing on your stream right now? Okay, I, I got to give you the, the rundown because it's just, <laughs> there's steps. And now you have one link. What? Now you have one link to give them. Yes. And it's ultimately not that complicated, but it's the, the theory behind it all of selling you this product that isn't the product, but it's the theory prospect of later products. It makes it extra, like, too much. Yeah. For me, but yeah. it's okay. I'm, it's a good game. To be honest, like, the I, I understand where people are coming from, where they're like, there's too many games and too many subscription services. What I will say is that the monthly is consistently worth it for, like, the fact that for $12 a month, you get, like, eight games. And Especially, they're good. like, this, this month, you got Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is excellent. Shrouded Isle literally just came out. Getting over it, Orwell came out, like, six months ago. Fury was a big game, you know, a year and a bit ago. Last month, you got The New Worms, Momodora, Killing Floor 2, Banner Saga 2. Wow. Month before that, Pillars of Eternity, Offworld Trading Company, Overcooked. Like, I understand if you're like, I have too many games, I just want one of them. But usually, it's it's a deal. If you yeah. play, like, two of the games, it's a deal. And you can cancel any time, right? I don't know about that. I'm not going to sell it for them, but not not anymore. We had a sponsored deal for XCOM 2. But... <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. Getting over it. It's, well, we just explained it. You'll figure it out. Uh... <laughs> just look at, the, go to the required reading section under the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and There's an appendices down there. You'll be yes. able to cross-reference everything. It's fine. Read the lecture mark trove.pdf and then come back <laughs> next week. Also, you can climb a mountain with a goddamn hammer. Yeah, that's the gist of it. <laughs> we spent like a good portion of time on that. That was great. Uh, uh, you know what, Ryan? I want to hear your I want to hear your thoughts on Vermintide. <laughs> Vermintide, yeah, is Warhammer left for dead? Yes, that is correct. A team of multiple steampunk archetypes descend or ascend through a town or a haven of various rat-based enemies. There's rats, and then the there's Skaven. rats. They're called the Sorry, Skaven. Sorry, the Skaven. Mm -hmm. Thank you. God. There's but they, rats. In the game, they call them rat men. They say there's, it. I well, thought they were DTs. There's rats. There's <laughs> DTs. There's DTs with guns. There's rats that are not DTs. <laughs> and if you call them DTs, Rob gets mad at you. Um, <laughs> and then there's big DTs, a.k.a. rat tanks. Uh, it is, I mean, it's... It's Left for Dead combined with the ability to get in-game loot that will actually yeah. help you out uh, okay. in future objectives. It is rat it is rat left for dead with loot drops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is it's really fun. Really fun game. Uh Nick, what were your thoughts? I also think it's really fun. I, I think I'm more into it than maybe you guys are now. Like I love the spirit of the cooperation. Uh, and the, the loot grind is just really addictive. Mm -hmm. The idea of finding dice in the game world that then increase your odds of getting a good item, that's really fun. I See, like, like that. Let's, let's focus on a good loot system. That's a good one. They not did it well. Is, you're not paying anything. It's yeah. just part of the game. It's how the game works. And it's like unique and interesting too. And it's got like a, a game mechanic built into it where if you find extra loot die scattered throughout the missions, you get a higher chance to unlock a cooler reward, which is neat. I'm gonna, be the, <laughs> I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the anti Vermintide guy, aren't I? Right. I came into this being like I I liked it more than I expected, but like it, I, I'm not gonna like damn them with faint faint praise over the loot system. I like, like it. You get well, no, the game is fun in general. I enjoy you get the new game items. Out. Like I was comparing it to Left 4 Dead as the thing, and Left 4 Dead yeah. doesn't have a loot Left system, and not. I find that mm -hmm. this is more fun than that. And I, I like Left 4 Dead, so that's a positive. I think the game is a little bit visually bleak in a way that's more than it needs to be to uh, assert the the theme that they're going for. Uh, they are making a second one. I, I don't know if that'll be addressed, but it's a pretty game. It's just really gray. Yeah, yeah. And brown. The, and in a way that's yes. like too much. Um, a little bit more visual interest in the lighting in some areas. I think they would have done better with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, it's basically just, you know, reskinned Left for Dead and has loot, and that's fun. I like Left 4 Dead. I like this. Yeah, that pretty much covers it. So there you go. Warhammer End Times Vermin Tide. It came out a couple of years ago. It's 30 bucks now. It was uh, You actually had a great deal on Chrono a little while back for that. But uh, that I know. I'm not either. done with this yet. Yeah, what's up? 
I want to I want to add some sandpaper. Sure. Because I think I have the, like almost exactly the same opinion on Left for Dead, and Left for Dead Two for that matter. So I'm not trying to say that Vermintide is worse than Left for Dead at all. Uh, but what I will say is that I just feel like I'm missing something in that it's sort of just the same thing for me over and over. What class did you play? Uh, you were the Wayfarer, Ranger. right? I was bow lady, bow lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. with two so daggers. The, a lot of the fun for me came from like the uniqueness of some of the classes, like uh, the Pyromancer or whatever it's called. How you have to manage like your heat levels, and if you go too hot, like the more fire magic you use, the the higher your heat level goes, just because the way the magic works in that world. And you have to uh, cool down and, and kind of alternate how you're casting spells. And there's a there's a fun little just kind of um, management mechanic involved with that particular character, that kind of thing. And that's really fun for me. And I like the cooperation of saving each other, getting out of really shitty situations and coming out of it just barely alive and then managing to finish the mission anyway. I think that's fun. Mm -hmm. But what about PUBG, though? (laughs) (laughs) Because you've been doing it anymore. I'm just saying. No, no, no. I'm I'm not. We can save that for Fortnite. However, like, I don't know. I, I found like I enjoyed it playing it for like an hour. But I was like, if I think if I think if I play this for like two or three hours, I would just be done because the loop is like not necessarily bad, but the same. Like you're mostly mowing down like ninety percent of enemies are one hit KO, and then like eight percent have a gun, two percent have poison, one percent is a tank or a, a hunter or whatever. I just sort of like I I I don't it, it doesn't it doesn't grab me for whatever reason. Uh uh-huh. It's, That's fine. Yeah, it's not got like. I think I'm kind of with you there, where like I don't know if I'd be able to play it for hours and hours at a time. It was like so we played it on uh, our show Squares, for example, and we played it for three hours there, and we mm-hmm. I, I think that was like a really good experience of it. I think that was like about the ideal length of time where the loop was still satisfying by the end of it. There's a, there's a, like an okay variety of stuff, at least that I've seen so far too, as far as the mission selection goes. So it's not like you're doing the exact same thing every time, but you are right in that the majority of the gameplay loop is stab rats. And that is, you know, like if you're not, if you're not enjoying that with your friends, that's like pretty much the main appeal. So that's, you know, mm-hmm. if you're not sold on that, then yeah, it's not that. Well, great. I mean, I, I feel like here's a question. Like how many hours do you have in Left 4 Dead 2? Because I think we're just cut from different cloths. Maybe. And I don't have that many in that game. So a, maybe I just didn't get enough experience there to have this. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, like I, I put like 20 hours in Left 4 Dead 2 and like 16 of that is because Kate wanted to play it with me. So I have 50 hours in that. I don't think I've got like even a noteworthy amount, honestly. I would have played more, honestly. Just everybody <laughs> kind of moved on to other that, stuff. That's you, what I mean. Like I, I have like zero interest in ever playing yeah. Left 4 Dead 2 again. Just for I just like I, I don't know. I get, I get less pleasure, I guess, than than some people out of the the gameplay loop because I. It's the default position is stabbing rats, but that's yeah. not what's fun about it. It's the moments that are around the stabbing rats, like when the tank shows up, and yeah, you got to figure yeah. out how to maneuver through that. It's like then, it's keeping you on your toes, and then all of a sudden it hits you with something crazy, and then you're like, okay, now here's where the actual game begins, yeah. where we have to be strategic, yeah, yeah. we have to use our potions, we have to like help each other out when somebody falls off a cliff or something like that. So, Or like grabbing, isn't there like, a, if I remember correctly, like if you're going for like super extra special, like an idol or something, and you can only carry like one at a time. Oh, to yeah, level, yeah, exactly. And then strategy the, and trying to defend that person because now they have a slot that's taken up that they can't use. The tomes, which is right. like there's the tome, three of them, I think, is. in every stage and then like and you can only hold them one the each yep mm-hmm. the like, expectation just... isn't really like th- when you're stabbing rats you usually assume nobody's gonna really get hurt much doing that that's yeah. just kind of carrying the level on sorry go ahead well i just I, I don't know i think it's just like different strokes for different folks like mm-hmm. i think the the meta game is interesting not even like the loot box stuff but the uh uh the the fact that you'll have waves composed of different amount of enemies and you kind of dynamically with your team you're like oh watch out there's this guy and he's been tagged and like we have to reorient ourselves to handle this like the best part for me was when we rang that bell and then we organized and split up into two sides that were like Mm -hmm. guarding both sides of that staircase i I had a lot of fun there i was like there's some actual strategy going on here but for the most part i really feel like i'm just left clicking 
on a horde. And then if, if something triggers in my brain and is like, there's more rats here than I can handle, I just hold right click until I hear a clang. And then I, yeah. I hit left click. But I, I think we're also setting ourselves up though for this is the learning period where we're in normal difficulty and we're supposed to be conditioning ourselves for the harder difficulties where we'll have better loot and then can handle more incredible feats of craziness. But is it just yeah. like more rats? It, well, probably. Probably. It's more like the I'm big not, tanky ones. Like I'm not saying it's bad, ones. but it's like, I'm, the, I'm also the guy who, when everybody was like, Killing Floor 2 is really cool. I'm like, I, am, I, just, don't, I just don't get it. It's like... Hey, that's you know, a similar but, gameplay loop. Too. Yeah. And it's, it's the same with Left 4 Dead, which I actually did play some single player Left 4 Dead like seven years ago. But I'm like, it just, just doesn't interest me now. Nick, you said you had 50 hours in that? I, I yeah. have 50 minutes. <laughs> Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> Most of my Left 4 Dead 2 was uh, prior to being like a PC guy and playing a ton on like the 360. Oh, so yeah, I yeah. I couldn't tell mm -hmm. you how many I have. I quite prefer the uh, the humans versus AI setup versus the humans versus ver uh, other humans setup. Like in Left 4 Dead, you can do a team of the infected versus the humans, and yeah, you know yeah. people are real crafty and basically will kill you every single time if you don't know all of the strats immediately. This is like okay, there's a fairly baseline level of competency you need to get through with a team that knows roughly what they're doing, and uh, I find more enjoyment in that than testing your knowledge against other players who've got two thousand hours in the game. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I hear you. Uh, yeah. Anything else? Any other bones you want to pick? I recommend it. I like it. I would, I'm looking forward to Vermintide 2. I hope we play more of it at some point. Maybe not on the NLSS, but I like the game anyway. Yeah. Uh, it is 30 bucks right now, Collector's Edition 50. And uh, as Nick mentioned, Vermintide 2 is coming down the pipeline, so uh, be aware of that as well. If you're looking for something free to play, well, boy, oh, boy, here you go. It's Battle Royale from Fortnite, which we have uh, talked a little bit about on the show already, of course, but haven't really gotten a lot of firsthand experience with. And uh, now we have. So, you know, I'll take the reins here. Fuck it, why not? Let me start off with this. Uh, I played some with Rob prior to uh, any of y'all, I think, checking it out. And uh, me and him had a pretty positive experience, I gotta say. It's, it's PUBG. It's PUBG, for sure. But it's got, like, it's, it's taken out a lot of the complexity and replaced it with arcade-style fun, which is basically exactly what I expected it to be. So it's pr pretty much proved me correct in that uh, regard. Uh, but so as far as removing the complexities, it takes away things like gun attachments, helmets, backpacks, pans bullet on drop. your ass. Well, bullet drop actually still exists. For so, the sniper rifle. For the sniper rifle, but not and for... And maybe the revolver? I can't remember. I, I don't know for sure. Uh, and instead, it focuses a lot more on just, you know, like, get a gun, and then there's light, medium, heavy bullets, you've got your rockets, you've got the shells for your shotgun, and then that's, that's like, most of the complex things. That, the base building, really. And the base the building, base. of course, too, has got its own uh, intricacies, but as far mm -hmm. as, like, the actual gameplay goes, like, you pick up those guns and very, very little else, like, there's bandages, med kits, shield potions, uh, and then... Is there really anything else besides that? I don't know if there's like different really... types of guns and, mm -hmm. and that's about it. Yeah, so a lot less stuff to worry about, like filling around on your floor and on the, and in the inventory screens at least. Uh, and then the actual construction of uh, bases and you know like the building of walls, staircases, uh, floors like that is surprisingly uh, prevalent in the game itself. That was one of my first suspicions was that people wouldn't really even bother building things because if you waste time in the building menu, you get shot in the back of the head, right? Which does happen. But when you get to like the top 20 or so, I tended to see a lot of people building like kind of similar style structures where they felt they were safe enough in these final circles to be able to kind of lock down and establish a base of operations of sorts. Even in, even in like solo games, people were doing this where they would get into the final area and then just sort of like build up like a two by three section of uh, floor and ceiling and walls and then they would build a staircase up to kind of peek around and build their own little base. So that was actually happening, which surprised me. And not, not to mention the fact that Throughout the course of the game, people would like just build these sky bridges, like 
crazy distances just for the hell of it to get from point A to point B. And then you'd occasionally have people like shooting out the bridge from underneath them and they would collapse and die, which is pretty hilarious. So it has those kind of things going for it. Like, that's not a PUBG thing. That's a Fortnite Battle Royale thing that it cannot happen in PUBG. So it's got its own unique appeal and it's it's a lot more fun than I expected to have uh, playing it, that's for sure. The the other positive I walked away from it uh, from playing today is that the matches are way faster. Mm -hmm. There's a whole like fifty percent of the running to nowhere with nothing going on is gone. Right. It's very the, the map is smaller, uh, which which by five ten minutes in, half the players are already dead, and uh, you're you're constantly there's always just action around the next corner, and they, there's not a lot of like well the circle's here I need a vehicle otherwise I'm just gonna die or we need to run now it doesn't matter you're gonna be able to get to the circle pretty much. No matter when you start running, you're pre you're pretty much uh, good to go. I feel um, like you can make it to basically like any point on the island from the bus. Yeah, yeah, you pretty much. Yeah, oh, you absolutely can. One hundred percent. You can just pretty much get anywhere from the bus uh, when you drop in. So it, it the the matches are a lot faster and a lot more action packed. Definitely. It's, Ryan, yeah, I walked away. I think like you with a very with a, a more positive opinion than I expected to after playing it. Mm -hmm. Hit me with that negativity, man. I can see it brimming in your eyes <laughs> I, I you know now unlike last week i played like two hours of it now yeah. i think it's absolutely completely fine sure uh and that's basically like apart from that like i'm a low simmering pot of rage <laughs> only because people <laughs> exclusively talk about Fortnite being fun within the context of what it does better than PUBG, which is also fine but mm. the the reason that i cannot I will never put like 300 hours into Fortnite the way I have into PUBG. Is because I just don't find the gunplay engaging. It's like As Borderlands a, style. Yes, which Correct. is I I have no real problem with the PVE of Fortnite. As we talked about when we played it on the show, you know, you shoot like three inches to the left of a zombie and they take 50 damage. You go, who cares? Yeah. But you know, when when you're in Fortnite and you can't aim down the sights. And you, unless you have a scope, and you have an assault rifle that you're hip firing from the peak of one mountain to the peak of another mountain, and you're watching like hit markers pop up. I'm just like, I, I just don't find that part specifically satisfying. And that long range gunplay makes up a bulk of the gameplay. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, I mean, it, it's it's basically an early access. So like the UI, I think, is borderline garbage. Like. I, I think the loot, the way that you loot and the way that you manage your inventory with the loot is also pretty bad. Um, but that that can be fixed. You doesn't PUBG just have like a big transparent bunch of boxes though? It like doesn't look that good either. Yeah, but it, in Fortnite, I actually don't even understand what you I'm like doing. Like drag not it up to their garbage, and I think it drops them. Well, no, no, that recycles it into components that you use for building. You have to oh. drag it to the very bottom, and then it drops it on the ground in order to... Oh, I tracked or it you the just... you gave it to Barry yesterday. Yeah, that's what or I you did, too. I thought you didn't you did put it. it in the garbage can. Oh. Or you just click on it and hit X, and it also drops it. Oh. I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's... It, it, everybody who I, I've talked to that has played Fortnite has said that the UI needs a lot of work. And that's oh, fine. I, I'm it, not it, saying it can, it's good. Okay, well, then here we are. Um, <laughs> I also think that it gets a lot of credit for things that... I, I don't necessarily disagree with, but I think they could be done better. The thing that Fortnite has done for me is open up the idea that an arcadey battle royale can totally work. And I'm, I'm fine with that. I just don't think it's Fortnite for me. I think that the like long distance gunplay on an island doesn't necessarily work too well with the way that the hit scan gunplay works in the game, but in like a different style of architecture, maybe. Like if there was a map that had like you know, it was more focused on interior combat or something like that. I think that would be cool. And then beyond that, the building is kind of neat. I will, I'll, I will give them that. I resent that for some reason this is the only game where nobody is complaining about using an axe to knock shit down and then build with the shit that they knock down. And we've just glossed over that completely. What are we but supposed to say about it? Every other survival game, we're, oh, I'm so sick of this particular gameplay loop. But then it comes to Fortnite and everybody is just, it's pretty cool. I think people are sick of survive by thwacking at a tree with an axe. They're not sick I'm of... I'm sick of looking at my hunger meter, having a hunger meter, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing, thirst meter, that kind of nonsense, even though I still play those games every fucking day. Um, 
I think the 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 resource gathering in in Fortnite is fast. It's not a tedious like I'm sitting there whacking the same tree for like in Minecraft, you're sitting there whacking the same tree for like 30 seconds or whatever to get all the bits of wood where in Fortnite you're just like bang 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 bang, I've got all the loot. Now I can build something. It's yes. it's quick. Mm. I also want to mention they literally do put wood as pickups all around right. the game world. Correct. You can yes. Pick it up and not harvest stuff at all. You, so. I mean, you can, yes. Yeah. If you want to build right now, that might no, not I, be I an never option. built when we were playing last night. I didn't really do it at all. And Rob was like building ramps literally in front of other ramps because he just didn't feel like <laughs> going around one foot to the right. Was, so, you know, different strokes for different folks. But he's not, he kept doing it too. It was so yeah. fucking ridiculous. He would like, it'd be a grass structure that is literally the landscape of that is a mirror to what he built adjacent to it every single yeah. time. To be honest with me, it's just the hit scan. I can't, mostly the hit scan. I can't argue with the fact that uh, Mathis is right. The, the rounds are shorter in a way that, that feels strange to me. It, it's foreign to be like two minutes into the game and be like, there's 50 people. Like the first circle's closing in and you're like, there's 30 people left? Yeah, no. I, 20 like, people left? Like, I don't even know what's happening there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's pretty much, the, the big thing for me is the hit scan gunplay. And that is accentuated as a negative for me by the fact that most of the gunplay, at least that I've been in in my limited experience, takes place at like a medium distance. Mm -hmm. When it's actually like when you're up close and personal and you're using a shotgun to shoot somebody, you're like, okay, that's fine. But I, I really, it just feels silly to me to be like hip firing and instantly hitting like laser shots mm -hmm. from, from a distance away, even if damage is like damping from that point onwards. But if they... I mean, they, they've opened my eyes to the idea that there could be a good arcade battle royale. I just don't think that this is necessarily it. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to play a ton of it. Like, I've actually, like, me and Elise, crazily enough, played some duos of this and had mm. a, a bit of fun. It's still, you know, like, it's still a battle royale, so it's still tough. But uh, it's it's got just such a, a unique appeal right now and it's you know it's free to play it's taking advantage of this blossoming battle royale genre so i'm i'm hoping that this is going to lead to um more exploration into what we can do with this because i i think this is kind of just like starting down a path of what kind of crazy shit can we introduce to battle royale to make it more fun or and what kind of crazy games can we completely shoehorn a battle oh, royale yeah. game <laughs> in to get to sure market too. as soon as possible before the the you know golden age is done. But this is like here's the thing though is like this is way more fun than Fortnite, right? Yeah. No, I actually it's one of those weird situations where in principle I'm like this I'm really cynical about it because it's a a transparent executive driven like business move. Yeah. But then I'm also like this I would way rather play the battle royale than play the PVE style exactly. uh, Fortnite. And Nick, would you rather play the PVE battle or PVE Fortnite over Battle Royale? Mm. I know it's a hard is there question. Another option? I kind of <laughs> you just don't want to play, play it. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, and, and if, if if I can at least like defend myself a little bit, I find it fucking insane that somehow Fortnite is the the PR darling here. And I know Blue mm. Hole has done enough to shoot themselves in the foot. And I know people resent Battlegrounds for myriad reasons. Yeah. Most of which stem from the fact that it's popular one way or the other. However, this is like a game that was in paid early access for 80 bucks for a completely different mode, rushed that out like a Fortnite free-to-play Battle Royale to take advantage of a good business environment. And they have the goodwill of the consumer I on their side. Can I be honest with you? I don't think they'd have the consumer goodwill if PUBG Blue Hole was. That's exactly what it is. No, I agree with that. But people should ass. people should be roasting them both. Like, because <laughs> this is like a this is not quite on the level of WB's like paid loot boxes in Shadow of Mordor. But this is them developing a game for five years, and then when it came out, they're like, "Oh, the business condition is right for us to completely pivot and like bounce off of that." I'm not saying the PVE for Fortnite is dead necessarily, but with 7 million downloads for Battle Royale in like a week since it went free to play, I think it's got a pretty good chance to to be the focus. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just surprised that Fortnite is for me like transparently business driven and cynical and and yet people are like they're the underdog fighting 
against Blue Hole. And we, uh, before you go, oh, NL's gargling the Blue Hole balls. We roast Blue Hole all the time. We I roasted them in the loot box section. They're like the worst offender, especially because they said they weren't going to do it. Yeah, that was like 45 we, minutes ago. Exactly. I'm just saying, I still think the market is right for somebody to be the people's champion. The, the, the reason I get incensed is probably a strong word, but the reason I find it silly is because I think it's short-sighted to be like Epic is the one doing everything right. It is better optimized. It runs a lot better. Yeah. And I, I can't take that away from it. Apart from that, I think, you know, it does some things well, some things a lot worse than PUBG. I think PUBG does some things well and some things a lot worse than, than Fortnite. Here's something stupid to consider. Do you think maybe people see Battle Royale Fortnite as the good guy because it looks so arcadey and happy and fun and PUBG is like the <laughs> hardcore I kill everybody simulation? No, I just think Blue Hole doesn't know what PR is and they fucked it up twice. This whole situation, I don't know how much you guys have read about what they're doing in China either, but the thing about like promoting yeah. a VPN in-game, which is so shady as well, like, yeah. geez. Just stop, Anybody want to try it. the division with me again? <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and here's why. It's not because the division Battle Royale is... is better or worse because i'm assuming because it's from a triple a studio mechanically and fundamentally it could be better but the principal strength of both fortnite and PUBG, as far as i'm concerned is the fact that when you click the play button you're in a game in like under 100 seconds yeah, yeah if, a- if PUBG took five minutes to queue like that that game would have one tenth as many players as it does i think so i that's the reason is because the the community is there yeah I'm coming I, I to think, the conclusion now that I think I just don't like Battle Royale games and I'm just tired of hearing about them in general because I don't find them interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't really get into the culling. That didn't do much for me. PUBG obviously didn't do much for me. This didn't really do much for me. And that's even despite hanging out with uh, with Bear and Rob. who like I, I just love hanging out with them, but that game just was like, whatever. I, it, it felt like work. I, I feel like I could mm-hmm. be doing anything else we and be having at work. least <laughs> as much a fun time or more. I'd much rather have been playing Overwatch. I'd much rather playing Rocket League. Like, yeah, almost yeah. you name it. But it just is like, okay, we're going to run around and get loot. Then we're going to die. Then we're going to wait. <laughs> and then we're going to start again. And we're going to get loot and then die. Like, yeah, okay, but sometimes we, we kill people, though, man. And it was even fun. Even if we win, the best case scenario is, okay, it's just the die condition, but with different words. I don't feel like <laughs> I've accomplished anything. I just don't think it's worth this much discussion or conversation about this battle royale concept just because people fucking spend money on it it's not because of the money it's because of the it's because of the time i I, everything else you say i allow like a million percent but it's it's not because like one person is spending like a thousand dollars each on on the game it's because 12 million people are playing it yeah 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 it's just a, it's a phenomenon right now honestly like it's, it's the division should take their battle royale mode remove it from the main game and don't force you to go through the tutorial and stuff and make it its own separate thing. They could. But, like, because it's good. Better than... <laughs> I keep trying try to get that out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just so much more Personal of a nuanced preference. issue because we're Personal all... Preference. We're all against this AAA, like, hype just jumping on a genre because it's hot. Yeah. Until... Now, where we're like, somebody's got to knock Blue Hole down a peg. I don't care. I just don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't care. (laughs) I think a lot of the reason... I I just don't care. (laughs) I think a lot of the reason, and I'm not saying I'm in this group. I think a lot of the reason people want to see Blue Hole knock down a peg is because what they've presented is not... Outside of the the gameplay solid, but everything else seems... I don't want to... I hesitate to say low effort, but everything seems like it, it too was pushed to market super fast to co- capitalize on this new hot trend. Mm-hmm. The yes. very same thing you cr- critiqued Fortnite for, and it runs like ass, and it doesn't look very good. It doesn't run like ass. <laughs> doesn't <laughs> run very good. No, but, I mean, I'm not saying it runs well, but, like, it's... What they've done is still a technically impressive feat, I think, at least. To have, like, you know, millions and millions of concurrent players all playing at the same time with occasional problems. To be fair... They also are pushing out updates previously, like once every two weeks. But now, like Chat once a says month, that you are horribly wrong, and it runs like Chat- ass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this sounds, it sounds rude to say. I know I, I play on low. That's because this computer has a, a quad core in it instead of what it should have, which is a six core or an eight core. Yeah. But the fact that people are saying like Blue Hole is technically not proficient enough is silly to me. It doesn't yeah, run great, that. but also at the same time, I think it looks ten times better than Fortnite. 
I think Fortnite looks like I thirteen. Oh, artistic God, preference, no. style yeah. is different. It's I a totally artistic that. preference. Yeah. I think I think PUBG looks like unreal things were plopped into a map and they said, "Here you go." But and that's the other thing. People are mad at like. PUBG for buying Unreal Store assets and putting them on the marketplace like via PUBG. This, there's nothing wrong with that. Un- I like that's one of the reasons it looks like ass. I mean, it, they, does the game become any better if they have a team of artists making like in-house assets for it? Maybe, maybe not. But like that's maybe. the kind. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing to like be mad at PUBG about when so many indie developers do exactly the same thing on the Unity Store. There's nothing right. wrong with buying. And that's buying. why Unity has a garbage no, no, no. reputation. Even good games, there's nothing wrong with buying stuff from the asset store that can be commercially reused, as long as it's in the license agreement. No, Everybody course, does it as a that. shortcut. Like, the any developers, you know, sometimes they make their own engine. Sometimes they, you know, write their own programming language, like Jonathan Blow. It doesn't necessarily make the game better. The game is like the product of what actually comes out of all the elements being added together. That's correct. But what's the end game of this conversation? I, I did kind of lose the plot lose And then we never play the other one again? They, like, both, <laughs> they both have a place. I'm just saying, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised at... I'm surprised at the press that, like, Fortnite gets just for not being PUBG. That's all, that's all I'm getting at. There's, if anything, like, I think for PUBG, there's room to make a much better Battle Royale. I think for Fortnite, there's time to make like you can make a, an arcade BR that's ten times better than this. I don't disagree with you. Yeah, it's you know obvious rush to market situation, but yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll go this ahead. It's gonna and... get so much worse before it gets better. No, oh, no, yeah. listen, you got years on. of this. Like, dude, this is I, I empathize with you. I truly do. Like, I get it because we've done this a lot and it's been a recurring this is conversation. The worst genre for me to have not liked. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm t- you're right. That's the thing. You're totally right because it's straight up a phenomenon, dude. Like this, I, I'm gonna reiterate this because I feel like it, it deserves to be reiterated. This took over the concurrent players record on Steam. That seems absurd a year ago, doesn't it? And now we're like in this world where all of a sudden battle royale is everything. So yeah, yeah. It, you picked the genre, unfortunately, to hate that is going to be pervasive probably for a couple of years now. So sorry, <laughs> but like agreed. I said. Earlier today, yeah. like we're gonna see years of BRs all over the place, and I would be absolutely surprised if three years from now PUBG is still the number one BR in the market. Me too. I really do feel like that. Like I, I mentioned it last week, PUBG Studios is gonna seem so silly in 2020 because it's gonna be like, oh man, they really went all in on that thing back then, didn't they? Well, it's it's plausible. I'll give you that. Three years is a long time, but beyond that, you know, we also said. Uh, you know, Pokemon Go by August 2017 would have, you know, 800 million concurrent players or something like that. Come it was going to revolutionize the, the industry. I did no such thing. What I said was I thought Pokemon Go would very well be about as popular as it is, as it is today last year. And that is definitely not true, but it's still popular. I think PUBG has a, a growth ceiling. However, I, you know... And this is, we're prognosticating the future. There could be a AAA Battle Royale that comes out and, and totally screws it. However, PUBG got strong through word of mouth. And when I think about what happens with AAA games, the hype peaks like two months before the game comes out. And then just before it comes out, a lot of people find a good reason not to buy it. You know, when I think about, uh, you know, For Honor, we're like, oh my God, there's going to be like a AAA chivalry. Everybody mm-hmm. hates For Honor now. Mm-hmm. I still kind of like For Honor, but everybody else is, is very cynical about it. And with good reason, I'll admit. Things that I think are valid, if not necessarily that relevant for the average player. So I think it's conceivable that uh, something could come along and be better than PUBG. But it, it has like a weird advantage that is going to be tough to circumvent. And the advantage is that it's got so many people presently playing it that it's going to be hard to get a, a critical mass of them to jump off, I think. Just because mm-hmm. something's better doesn't necessarily mean that it can surmount PUBG at least easily in terms of concurrent player count. Yeah. I guess yeah. This, is, this is obviously like, you know, thinking, not, not necessarily, I can't think of the right word. It's uh, whatever. Uh, hypothesis, there it is. Mm-hmm. Um, is that when like a proper PUBG that kind of comes out maybe by AAA developer, what the hell is Blue Hole gonna do? Are they gonna like 
like throw a fit spon- throw <laughs> spontaneously <laughs> combust because of because of that like m- they need they my my only advice to blue hole is like hire a pr person if you have let them do their job because you they are the a big reason Fortnite BR is as popular right now as it is. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much all they need to do is shut their mouth. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, that's all they needed to do the and first time around. Make yeah. billions. They they update the game. It is not the typical early access case of like, the, it's trash, yeah. right? Like the game is being updated. Three months ago, servers were way worse. If you think it's bad now, like there there was a period where it was horrible, but. Like they're they're actually mostly doing early access right. I can sympathize with people who want to see something better, but you know, EA made a MOBA, Deep Silver made a MOBA. You know, check the concurrent player count for fucking Dongate or Dead Island Zombie Survive. I don't even remember what the MOBA <laughs> that game's is called. Gone. That was shut down. <laughs> the, the point is, you know, like League's still at the top, Dota's still at the top. Is it because they're the best? Maybe, but it's also because they have inertia. So I think. 2020 is a long way out, but I think it's you're writing up battlegrounds a little early. I think. Sure. I just want something else that isn't just shooting. Like I, I don't mean to paint myself into a corner. The concept of eliminating a hundred people from something to be the winner is kind of okay, mm-hmm. but I need it to be something really different. Yeah. And I know I was joking about it when I said a Tony Hawk's Underground <laughs> Battlegrounds game. But like a hundred people on a giant skate island, I would actually enjoy that. Unironically, whoever puts up the the sickest shred line wins. I I don't know if you like try to knock the other people down or if it's just about maintaining a chain for the longest time and the last one alive with the highest score wins. Whoever can grind off Look. the most parts of the <laughs> no, island. No, but like for real though, like that <laughs> nobody's gonna make a skateboarding battle royale. Like why? They were the before Fantasy Land. This they is are crazy now. Talk. Fortnite just did it. Why can't Tony? We Hawk? get like 250 <laughs> games a day on Steam at this point. Are you Fuck it. Me make I fucking a... play a game about a man in a kettle with a sledgehammer and this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. Like, for real, this could be a thing, and it could be popular for, like, five days. Sure. No, I'm, ser- I'm dead on serious, man. What I actually want to see is, like, a 10-minute 16-player battle royale. Oh, that's, yeah. No, like, that's short more, form. Mm-hmm. That, that's where I want to see the genre go, is, like, a good round could still be finished in under 15 minutes. So what you were saying is you want to play Division Battle Royale because this is, like, a 24-player battle royale. Yeah, but I, I wanted to have... I want it to have enough concurrent players that as soon as I True. queue, I'm in a game. Mm. We know it's like, how many people. I can't stress this enough. That's like, if if I think Battlegrounds is like a nine, maybe five of that is the fact that when you click play, you're in a game. <laughs> I really can't stress that enough. We, it, it's to the point where when you queue to play Fortnite, it takes like a minute. And I'm like, this is crazy. But, but reevaluate how important that is to you and how kind of out of touch that is with the world. Who cares about that? In this I game? think that's a huge factor for keeping I, people frictionless playing gaming is important, but yeah. like a minute versus zero, is it gonna end the world? I don't think so. Especially no, in a I mean, queue, like you, when you can just like alt tab and not even worry people about been it. Playing Dota, there's queues of five minutes sometimes. Yeah, but the Dota game lasts like half an hour, no matter what. If you like queue for five minutes to get an H one Z one King of the Kill drop off the plane and get shot in the head, yeah, then you have to queue for five minutes again, mm-hmm. like. That's, Battlegrounds that's takes 30 minutes every single time. When you wait under the stairs, it takes 30 minutes. <laughs> no, but, like, yeah. but as soon as you're <laughs> done, like you're that. back in the game. Yeah, no, no. That's I'll the thing. Is like it, The queue time actually matters if you have a chance to die early. Like if, if Dota happens, like, I'm okay, 30 minutes is a little bit of an exaggeration, but there are very, very few like 20-minute games of Dota. Yeah. And you're in for 20 minutes no matter what. That's why I, when I play Heroes of the Storm, I don't mind that the queue no matter takes what, like good six or minutes. Evil. Yeah, mm. exactly. You could be like trapped in there forever. But like <laughs> the fact that when, in Heroes of the Storm, you queue for like six minutes, it's okay because you're getting 15 to 30 minutes of gameplay out of it. In H1Z1, this is part of what killed King of the Kill is that it was a five minute queue. And then if you dropped and got shot in your one-on-one right off the bat, you just immediately had to go back into the queue for five minutes. In yeah. battlegrounds, it's like instant. Mm. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna steer us off this ship, and uh, no I'm more gonna, of this topic I'm ever gonna, again. Until next <laughs> no, we week, can, please. I, the don't make me Rocket League times battle 10. royale, Fortnite version. <laughs> <laughs> I I will pay 
all of our friends to only play Fortnite just to watch Ryan lose. <laughs> I will, I will, it wouldn't bother me, to be honest. I will surrender my share of the, the revenue from this podcast to skip this for the <laughs> rest of the never have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make any promises, man. We're gonna no, there's got to be a market for Battle Royale-only podcasts out there. Oh, I'm I started this. <laughs> it is your fault, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I want to talk real quick about uh, Battle Chasers, which, man, what a name. I mean, for me, I guess, because, you know, look, for for the creators of this game, I, this comes from a place of understanding. I named my show Roundtable Live. I'm not the greatest with titles, but Battle Chasers Night War is tough in the SEO market, I feel. Uh, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a fucking boring-ass name. It is, but that's, like, that's the biggest knock I have on it. So let me let me start off just by saying that. So... Battle Chasers Night War is an RPG. Uh, it's got like Final Fantasy style uh, combat. It's pretty traditional JRPG. Uh, but they've also done a bit to modernize the feel of it a little bit. Primarily, uh, the overworld is a lot more modernized. It's a lot more linear. Uh, the uh, like the the gist of it though is JRPG. I, I'd still have to say. Uh, one of my favorite parts of it, though, is that uh, not just in the game, but apparently in the comic book series that this game originates from, uh, the characters have always kind of defied those RPG, RPG tropes at the same time. So you've got uh, one of the main characters is this little blonde girl named Goli, who, you know, when you see a character like her, you probably think, oh, she's probably the healer or like a rogue or something like that. She's the tank. So she's the one, like, building up her defenses, getting a bunch of health and stuff like that, and has a taunt move that draws all the attacks into her. So she's, you know, completely the opposite of what you'd expect. Same with this giant robot guy you got as your companion. He's the healer. So, you know, like, you got all these different things they're doing to defy uh, the modern logic, which is kind of neat. Uh, but apart from that, the game itself is uh, a lot of fun. If you don't like RPGs, it's not going to be for you. It's not going to be the one that gets you involved with this sort of thing. But... If you are a fan of Final Fantasies of the of the past and like the JRPG turn-based combat, uh, that sort of thing, it is not only a a good JRPG, but also has like really interesting combat and combat mechanics uh, that set it apart from the pack. So a couple of those. Well, not to mention the fact that they have those, but they also introduce them throughout the game uh, in in a very good tutorialized way to the point where you're not overwhelmed, but there are quite a few mechanics at play. So uh, when you get into combat at the start, there's not a ton going on. You, you begin to be introduced to just your combat abilities and things like that. And then it's, it shows you a mechanic called overcharge. And overcharge works where you use a normal move like a jab and you'll generate plus 10 overcharge. And then you have that as a temporary mana reserve for only that bout of combat. So it becomes this balancing act uh, as you go of how much mana do you want to use uh, for this fight, how much overcharge can I build and how much can I carry over to like, the next wave of this combat, for example. Uh, it's, it's really well done and uh, creates a lot of interesting uh, options right away for what you want to do in combat. Uh, there's also the burst function, which basically acts as like an overdrive where you build the burst meter over the course of combat and then you can use like a super move with a persona style animation attached to it, which is pretty neat. Uh, and the characters all have quite a bit going on too. There's like there's a perk tree that you can use. There's a just like I mentioned, like combat abilities progressively unlocking through the course of the game. And it's been pretty damn good so far. I put in about three and a half hours and uh, beat one big dungeon and uh, got into one of the first main areas. And I hear tell that the dungeons actually become quite challenging and long later on in the game. Since Victor was letting me know one of the later ones actually lasts like two hours. So you got to be uh, careful about that, I guess, if you're, uh, you know, conservative with your with your time spent in games like this. Uh, the presentation is fantastic. The art style is phenomenal. The VO in particular is really, really good, I felt, along with the soundtrack. It's top-notch. So all the presentation value is there for it, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's I, I was really having a much better time with this than I anticipated. Uh, again, honestly, it was mostly just due to the name. I, 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 for whatever biases I have, I just cannot let myself believe that a game called Battle Chasers would captivate me this much. But sure enough, it's uh, it's got me, and I'm definitely definitely going to be playing more of it 
in the near future. So, yeah, there you go. That's Battle Chasers. It's better than Darkest Dungeon, like Sin said. No. <laughs> even like, the, the way I understand it, it's it's turn-based combat like... It looked like a Final Fantasy game. Yes. To me. Mm-hmm. So it's not like yeah. terrain based like the Banner Saga or No, 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 no. It's all it's this turn based straight up like it's just a Final Fantasy style. But it's got those mechanics like I mentioned that set it apart. Really like that's what by far is the most interesting thing to me about it is the fact that when you have so many of those things at play finally, it becomes a really cool juggling act of how you use your resources through the course of a fight. And like I said, dude, like they've got wave based combat, so you'll fight like two or three enemies and then carry that overcharge with you into the next wave so that you can effectively utilize things without you know actually taking away from your reserve of mana points which you need to be conservative with because you're trying to like carry that through the course of an entire diablo style dungeon so well not diablo style dungeon it's more like a i don't know i can't come up with a great comparison right off the top of my head but uh that was one of the comparisons i was making for sure is like when you're looking at just moving through the exploration exploration areas it feels a lot like diablo or like torchlight people were making uh divinity original sin 2 comparisons as well so you guys might be uh, intrigued by that too but i've seen that yeah mm-hmm. it looked um i've seen the game kind of like just in bits and pieces and videos and stuff and it looked interesting but it just doesn't look like it'd be up my alley because I, I like jrpgs are for me not as entertaining as they used to be and it looks like it was just kind of like a a jrpg i'll, I'll be a good one mm-hmm. a very good one but not not one for me yeah no that's totally reasonable like i said yeah it's 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 definitely an rpg so that you know not not if that's not your thing, probably not going to be for you. When, we, but. when Ryan and I still have like 300 more episodes of Divinity 2 to go. Right, yeah, I know. <laughs> I think you guys are going to be challenged to try to get, fit this one in your schedules, I'm sure. If it was an ARPG, I'd be down. I think it looks artistically kind of like Torchlight, which yes. I can't get enough Torchlight. I would If they made a Torchlight 3, I'd be in it immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just I don't have the patience for turn based as much lately. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's I, depends I, how it's presented. I hear it gets to be a little bit grindy later on too because it does have uh, another one of those RPG tropes where you can only level up characters that are in your party at the time. So you have to go back and like <sighs> grind for those characters that you didn't bring along with you so that you can make sure they're up to speed all the time. So yeah, you got to do that right. as well. It's like oh, no. it's honestly I, like that's... it's. <sighs> It's an 8 out of 10 for me because, like, it's got those just little iffy things where, uh, you know, like, you you modernize such, you modernized other things to such great effect, but now there's still this little issue that I can't get over. Yeah, I can't, like, that's a PS1 era, like, you can't level your party unless you're in your party thing is, is kind of... I think we've gotten over it's, that, right? As a, yeah, as a species, because that's just like a, <laughs> all, I can only see that as like a time sink at yeah. that point. Like mm-hmm. you're just grinding for the sake of grinding to pad your playtime. Nothing. Like logically, it makes sense. Like if they're not there, they shouldn't get sure. the experience. But it's it's just a bother, honestly. Um, I, I, I like I feel a little bad too because I know that this is like a pretty beloved. Uh, comic book franchise from back in the day apparently uh joe madureira i think is how you say that he he is a, a spot uh, on oh joe madrinas yes. joe madrinas yeah you know excuse me i'm not talking about them for days. <laughs> you just wait <laughs> Ooh, look at that stealthy sip um, what i didn't know <laughs> nothing um but yeah anyway I, I don't know much about the source material i just want to you know <laughs> <laughs> what, what the fuck was that? What did I miss? <laughs> you what just like do? chucked it at your it's, face. It's bee nectar from the back forty. <laughs> oh. oh my god! I didn't know AIM got shut down today. Rip you, AIM. I'm Rip doing AIM. a show. God damn it! I, let me see, ba- <laughs> Battle Chasers Night War is thirty dollars. It's on Steam. You can get it now. Okay, AIM shut down. <laughs> that sucks. That's, That's all there is to it. Okay, the end. Next. <laughs> You're just on Reddit right now. No, no it's Twitter. Is... It's on Twitter. Okay, yeah, up. no, that's better. Uh, hey, uh, Ryan, tell me about Stick Fight the Game, please. Stick Fight the Game is Gang Beast meets Duck Game. It is a two to four player, uh, player deathmatch game. It takes place in single rounds, four people, up to four people. Weapons drop from the ceiling. You can punch, you can block, you can grab the weapons and shoot each other. Uh, it's also five dollars and the online seems to work pretty well that's good so it is like the duck game comparison is very fair because it's got the same structure and the same kind of idea with weapon spawning and then it's got kind of like wonky physics it's Mm -hmm. physics driven in the same sense as gang beasts except 
you can pretty much walk wherever you want to go. It's just not 100% easy to, like, control your character at all times, at least to begin with. But uh, it's pretty good, except there's no scoreboard. So we played it for, like, an hour, and we had, like, no idea who had the most kills, really, although the winner apparently has a crown. Like, whoever's in the lead has a crown. Who We had no idea, like, superlatives, like, who had the who, who had the most deaths, who killed themselves the most accidentally. But the hook is, like, it's frictionless. Every single level has, like, its own unique characteristics, like traps that can kill you and different weapon spawns and stuff like that, like a snake rocket launcher. But uh, it's okay, mm -hmm. is my opinion. Sure. I played it with Nick, so I'm interested to know what he thinks. I agree. It's okay. Uh, it's like six out of ten kind of game for me yeah. it's just enough interest that it's like okay this will work for an hour i don't think i could play it any longer than that though yeah uh really need the scoreboard really don't know how that works that you don't have one like if you have a crown over your head you clearly know who's winning why not so they have like a, yeah they have a behind the scenes scoreboard clearly but they're just or, choosing not to show we, it to you are we idiots and we didn't know where the scoreboard i, was. I really don't think we could have <laughs> missed it like i was okay. in the options menu for like like 10 percent of that section yeah. and there's just nothing so uh i mean i mean okay so i mean Steger's in chat and he's a game developer he says like they would hide the scoreboard because it hides skill disparity between players i understand where you're coming from but like the option would be nice because i just kind of i find it hard to know i did to build like any kind of moment when i don't know oh like there's four rounds to play, and I'm three points behind Nick, so I've got to win at least three of the next four to have a chance. Mm -hmm. Like, Think about how Duck Game does it. They do intervals, and then we have a little reveal of who's at what point in the scores. Exactly. Like, basically the perfect way to do it, I would say. Yeah, uh, I think that, I also that's don't fine. care if there's a scoreboard at all. It doesn't change anything for me. I think it would work better if, if it had a... I, I mean, I think it would just work better if it was structured exactly like Duck Game, which is not, <laughs> like, yeah. really necessarily relevant criticism. It's like the, why doesn't it just be more like Isaac criticism yeah, yeah, that yeah. I fell into for, like, three years? But, like, it, it would make it a lot more engaging for me if, if there was almost, like, an end point, and then it was like, we're starting over from zero now. But right, because there's no win condition. Nobody wins. Yeah, we just keep playing and playing. You just go until you don't want to play anymore. Which right. is kind of like, you don't need to structure it like that. I can just do that myself. I, I can just turn it off when I'm done anyway. But On the upside, you could change the game conditions live while we're playing, which was a really nice touch. Yes. If you want to break into some snake guns out of nowhere, you could do that. You could change the HP. And again, it's bizarre that they have such granular controls regarding that, but they don't have such an obvious thing as a scoreboard. Yeah, that's a little interesting. It's like it, it does the half that most indie multiplayer games don't do it does that half really well which is like a lot of variety and the online pretty much works although it's laggy but i think like we take that that's like an a minus mm -hmm. yeah when it comes to indie multiplayer games the fact that it even has online to begin with look at gang beast that's been out with online for what a year and a half now and it's it's yeah. more broken now maybe than ever before mm -hmm. <laughs> then like on the other half it kind of just the the core gameplay itself is not as interesting, I think, as like a samurai gun or a, a duck game or a you know a tower fall or something like that. So it's just uh, it it doesn't quite have the complete package, but it, it was fun to play for. It, it, its chief strengths are that it's fun to play. There's a lot of variety, variety, uh, and you can also get it for five dollars. So outside of the stick figures, which I have an inherent bias against, I actually thought the artistic presentation was not bad either. Uh, and the sound design was very strong. The guns felt very impactful, more so than I expected. Yeah. Um, like, you'd shoot somebody in the head, and it felt like you shot somebody in the head. <laughs> yeah, there, there was some good moments. Sweet. You know what it actually made me nostalgic for was the showdown effect. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, man, that, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. that game had really stiff animations. Uh, agreed. But it's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm a, a fanboy for uh, the stuff that Arrowhead makes. I, I think I like... Hell divers more than probably everybody else I know combined, <laughs> and that might be true for the showdown effect as well. Like I was like, the showdown effect is this, but better. But I'll play that again. That was good. Yeah. If if we can still play it, I would love to showdown play. Showdown effect, effect is the game that I was able to weasel my way into your group with. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. Because you did like fan games for a while, and you like oh that from makes chat sense. In. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And now you're on the show. <laughs> I did it. Your dreams can come true, chat. 
Stick fight the game. It's five bucks, like you said. It's uh, available on Steam right now. It's like exactly okay. Sweet. That's, might get better. They might put that on the Steam page. It's like exactly okay, Northern Lion. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Nick, please tell me about a hat in time. It's cute as heck. Yeah, Hat in Time is the brand new platformer that has been in the for about as long as I've been doing YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I want to say God, it's yeah. like about since 2013 or so. That sounds right. Um, and I've been following it all this time. It only just came out now. And I don't mean that as an indictment because actually it's really good. It's... Uh, they put all that time into uh, into a good place uh, for development on that. And I I played about three hours of it this morning and I actually enjoyed all of it. The sound design's great, the controls are great, the story is cute and quirky, I like the character, I like the collectibles. I almost don't have any negatives that jam like right into my mind right out of the, the gate, other than maybe it might be too short, but I also don't know if that's true either because I've only almost beaten the first world entirely. And there's four chapters that I know of that are in the game now, and I think they're doing post-release content uh, as well, I think I read up to three additional areas. So if that's the case, and they are as robust as the first world, uh, there could be easily over 20 hours to that. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, maybe. Does that sound on par for you? Sounds about right. Um, uh, go ahead, please. Yeah, no, there, there haven't been a lot of fantastic 3D platformers, and the ones that come out, I mean, I'm sure you can come up with ideas. Ukulele um, kind of rely on nostalgia, and they basically just wanted to recreate Banjo-Kazooie, and that's fine. There's nothing really wrong with that, but it doesn't feel like it's got its own spirit, and I feel like A Hat in Time does. Mm -hmm. It takes really? some of that same motivation from stuff like Mario Sunshine, and it gives it its own total vibe and feel. Um, and it's, it's witty to itself enough. It's cute. It's quirky, like I said. It doesn't go too over the top with trying to be edgy or trying too hard to say anything in particular. It's just like a nice, enjoyable experience. It's very peaceful to walk around, actually. Yeah, I agree. Like, I actually love the time I've spent with it so far. And this comes from someone who actually really, really, really liked ukulele. I think it, it was like one of my favorite uh, of that style of game in a long time. But I, as soon as I started playing A Hat in Time, and a, just the minute I was able to start platforming and playing it, it felt really good. Like it felt mm. like a Mario Sunshine responsive. Um, and I could I could see almost instantly like this game would be really fun to watch someone speed run because the, the platform mechanics are so tight and you can do a lot with it. Um, it just plays really well. It does, it, yeah. It just plays exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. They tune the controls really well. Like they actually took a lot of time, I think, to really think about what it feels like to move the character around the game space. Uh, I'm talking stuff like when you do a jump and then the forward dash, which is like falling on your belly. When I did that in Mario games, I always felt like I was kind of out of control. Uh, in this, you can kind of cancel out of it at almost any point, and you always feel like you're pretty much right in control of the character. Um, even down to like when you're walking across tight ropes, uh, they they kind of hone in what the control stick can do with those but then when you're on like bigger like a pipe or something with a rounded edge that seems like it would be easy to walk right off the edge they don't actually need to do anything because they actually have a bit of a dead zone where even just a slight movement isn't enough to really cause you to walk off so I, they really thought well about what they're trying to accomplish with that um, I did walk past a couple of tutorial elements in the beginning which I, I grant was my own fault but also, like, I didn't do the thing they expected me to do, which is to walk straight forward. So I don't know to what degree that's like, is that a problem or not? Whatever. I figured it out. It's just I wasn't quite in the loop for everything I was supposed to be doing, and I missed a little story beat about Mustache Girl. And then, you know, you can go back and do it again if you re-enter that, uh, that world in the same mission. But I didn't know what was going on for a second. Do you have any of those experiences? I didn't. I didn't seem like I spit. I, I missed out on any story beats, but I can see how that could happen. Yeah. Uh, I haven't played it a ton, but uh, you know what I'm realizing about myself is this is not my genre of game. I really am not Ooh. super into these collectathon 3D platformers, but I can definitely appreciate why this is a good one because mm -hmm. it does. Like you mentioned, the controls are fantastic. It's fun to move around. Which yeah. is, you know, that's got to be like a core of these kinds of games. It's like if that if it does that well, then good. It's probably got you know like half the requirements for this already down pat. 
Uh, but then, like the the presentation is fantastic. It, it, like it said, it's cute as heck. It, it's just really, it's impossible not to like the characters and the world, and just like it puts a smile on your face. It does a fine job of that as well. But I just kind of find it boring, generally. Like it's it's really just sort of aimless movement for me, and I I don't yeah. get a lot of satisfaction out of it. So I just don't feel it's my thing. But I am actually with you, like, 100%. Mm -hmm. I was like, why am I not excited for this? Like, what's wrong with the game or what's wrong with me? I just, like, I don't like collect-a-thon platformers. Yeah. I, I liked Banjo-Kazooie when I was, like, 12. I'm not saying it's a game that's only for 12-year-olds, but as a kid, I enjoyed it. But apart from that, like, didn't really have a lot of fun with a lot of them. And I, I think ukulele... I, I said on the show that ukulele kind of spoiled ahead in time for me, but I think all it spoiled was reminding me that I actually don't like them. Yeah. Even like uh, Rayman, I can respect Rayman, and I played through all of, uh, I think it was Origins with Kate, and I was like, this is really fun, but deep in my DNA because of what I grew up playing, I want like a platformer where you fall in a pit and you die, not a platform, and then you get to like a flag and you win the level. I just don't resonate as much with the platformers where you like, you know, oh, Explore you've collects. only got 99 out of 100, you know, red feathers gems. or some shit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. No, I can say I can definitely see that. See, I was a huge fan of like the 3D collectathon platformers, so I know that that it's built into my DNA. Like that yeah. was what I grew up with and loved, and uh, it's not a surprise to me that ukulele and Hat in Time have really kind of retickled that for me. This is also a criticism that I even ha uh, hesitate to uh, throw at it, but I'm not, like, in love with the art style. I think the shading is a little weird, especially, like, on the characters, and the girl's face just, just I don't know, it just seems like it's, well, it's, it seems like it's from the GameCube era, which I suppose may very well be deliberate, yeah. so, yeah, I don't know, it's just... It's, uh, the eyes look like Wind Waker. Yeah, like they, they do. I yeah. think they mm -hmm. took some cues there, and actually some of the UI elements... I thought it looked just like Smash Brothers. So oh, I don't yeah. know if this was all intentional, but a lot of these things felt like they were peppered in. Uh, there's some influences in there, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Didn't bother me. I like the art. Yeah, sure. Uh, also, just a quick uh, positive for it, uh, the, the menu options are uh, uh, like, wow. I was blown away by how many things you could do with it. So kudos to them there, too, I guess. Like, they got everything you could really think of for PC settings for a game like this. That just it surprised me that they thought that far for it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Anything else? There's little extras too. Like you can unlock uh, different flourishes for your hat to make it look different. You can change your clothes. And they're little unlockables. Like have, uh, after you do some of these areas, like secret kind of off to the side areas, they'll give you a slot machine. Mm -hmm. And you can unlock extra little bits uh, and like remixes of the soundtrack as well. Uh, oh, but for how much money? <laughs> <laughs> In-game currency that you earn by walking around. Yeah, yeah. Not not like American dollars? Yeah. Well, what's the point? That's Yo, stupid. You know what they could have done? Need a shortcut. Because you get, so in the game, you like have to make new hats. Yeah. And they give you different, different powers, which is really neat. They could have put those in loot crates. Dude, this seems, this is honestly like, it's it's a game about hats. And that was like, that was all that microtransactions in loot was eight years ago was hats true it's all, yep. it's all anybody cared about they had a, hat crates yeah there we go well i really liked a hat in time for the bit i played i haven't finished it so i don't know if you should take this with a grain of salt maybe it gets worse as i go in but based on the first three hours or so i feel like this is probably the best modern 3d platformer that i've played personally um and despite the sort of high-ish price i think it's warranted you know, I, I, I've got about the same amount of time in the game with you, and I think I'm right on there with you. I think it's, it's one of the best modern 3D collect-a-thon platformers. Is it better time. than Ukulele Mathis? Yes, it is better than Ukulele. Well, there you go. I like, I like Ukulele a lot, mm. but it has issues. But, um, uh, like, that, here's one of them. You can unlock <laughs> that. <laughs> now <laughs> you can. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's sorry. awesome. Uh, no, but, like, one of the big problems with Ukulele that I had is that the camera was still not great mm -hmm. in ukulele you kind of fought with it a lot that's not the case in hat and time and the cameras in this actually really good in this game i yeah like when in that you don't even notice it really like it just and there's works. actual voice acting oh yeah that's <laughs> true too that's actual mm -hmm. voice acting instead of just blah, 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 blah. so yeah there we go can you press a to skip through the dialogue yes yes wow <laughs> what a revelation <laughs> that's wonderful 
Hat in time. It's thirty dollars. Came out yesterday. It's on Steam. It is on. Oh, it's on a bunch of platforms, isn't it? I'm pretty sure they put it on quite a bit of stuff. Be good. Be good. If it's your style, get it. Mm -hmm. It is on uh, PS4, Xbox One. It's on the Mac. If you can believe oh, it. Boy. Wow. Arrowheads. Tell me about this one real quick. Let me know when you guys are done. I don't know who you're looking at. Uh, I'm just kidding. Either Ryan or Nick. <laughs> you too. Ryan, tell me know what Arrowheads is. You got food in your mouth. Nick, tell me about Arrowheads. Yeah, there's, there's not a whole lot to it, to be honest. Sure. It's a, very much like the stick fight game in that it's sort of a quick little deathmatch-oriented game where you play as birds with bows and arrows, and you uh, have a sort of a three-fourths perspective, which is not what you would expect for this type of game, and the goal is to try and judge that perspective and create an arc with your arrow to hit the mm -hmm. enemies mm -hmm. and win. Um, in the course of that, there is some unlocking to be done where you can get different heads for your bird or different arrows that you know, leave a, a blue or a purple contrail behind them. I think Rob was shooting me with guitars at one point. Nice. So it gets a little silly in that respect. Uh, but ultimately, it's really just a quick little simple deathmatch game uh, from what we played in the multiplayer anyway. Um, there may be actually a single player mode too, I'm not sure. Um, but not super big or substantial, just a, a quick little fun, you know, shoot each other online game. That's all. How'd you feel? It was like an isometric online tower fall, basically. Yeah. So that that isometric perspective has got to be like weird, right? Like, you... I found it like extremely disorienting. That's what I would honest. expect. Like, you have you do have like um, a, an arc that shows you where your shot is gonna land, but it it I'm not saying it lies to you necessarily, but it it does sort of change based on elevation. So like if you're standing on something that's higher. I kind of feel like the arc is not 100% accurate. And if you're standing on something lower, it kind of feels like the arc is not 100% accurate. But I, I might be mistaken in that. But I found it difficult to, especially because you, you can't like uncharge a shot, which makes sense mm -hmm. because you're, you're using a bow. But it, it became awkward to aim, I found, uh, once we were moving around. It definitely didn't feel like... Um, I'm trying to think of like a, a multiplayer twin stick shooter that that sort of makes sense for this, but I can't really. I just I, I had trouble hitting people on the regular as a result of the perspective. I think, mm -hmm. and I thought that might have been intentional because if they did it as a straight like 2D game, or if the camera was a little bit less obtuse, maybe it would just be too easy, yeah, and there yeah. wouldn't be any challenge. So in this way, you at least get a moment that you can run around because the stages are quite small. Um, you're pretty much all within trajectory of each other as soon as you spawn mm -hmm. and if you could immediately shoot each other like every single game would be over in one second yeah that makes sense so. all right cool to be honest like i i'm gonna come across like maybe a little harsh but i didn't really like it yeah i think uh again the online works and that's actually like at least a four out of ten just by itself but a, i yeah. didn't actually find the actual core part of it i i did <laughs> like i liked it a lot less than i like stick fight and i only like stick fight okay like by the end of the hour with arrowheads, I was like, I don't really need to. It just, it, it seemed to us, and maybe we were missing, it seemed to me that when we were playing, unless we were missing something, there was a lot of just like spamming arrows and, and not a whole lot of depth to like, like there's a parry system, but we could never land the parry system because you can't parry when you move. Instead, you dash when you, uh, when you use the parry move while you're going. Mm. Anyway, like I just, it, it needed like something else to, to draw me in beyond just like, I hit you, you hit me. Mm -hmm. They were verging on that because there were actually some upgraded arrow types, like a split shot that drained, I think it was like three or four arrows at once. There were Tesla coils, which you could make like electric borders with. Uh, and then there were rockets. And we, we rarely got those things, except for the Tesla coils, which seemed to get a lot. Um, but since the levels were so small, it didn't make a drastic difference anyway. Uh, and some of the levels even had traps on them, like uh, one was half filled with lava, one of them had snowballs that would fall down. Um, and if you ended up in the wrong spot, you get killed by that on top of it. So in a small level, for like a fifth of it to be taken up by something, and then there's rockets mm -hmm. that take up like two more fifths, you're just all dead. Like, yeah, <laughs> there's yeah, nothing yeah. left to do. <laughs> so, I don't know, I kind of agree with Ryan, it was fine. Uh, it wasn't something I'd probably play again, uh, but it wasn't bad just wasn't particularly interesting either yeah it's like one of those things that i mean if you had like i don't want to suggest it'd be better as local only because i think that's just patently false but like i don't think you would ever get your friends together and be like let's play an hour of arrowheads like once a week 
Like Towerfall, I could totally see that. We had people over to play Towerfall, and I'm not even that into Towerfall relative to a lot of people. It's like Duck Game, I would any anytime, anywhere. If you were like, let's play an hour of Duck Game, I'd be like, if I can fit it, I'll do it. Because mm. like Duck Game yeah. is a, a ton of fun by itself. This, I was just kind of like, hey, it, it works. Yeah, I, I think Duck Game because it's like really precise, and you have a very quick reaction time that you can deal with. It actually tests your dexterity more. This felt a little just scatter shot, like literally, like you're just firing arrows everywhere and hoping you hit. Yeah. And we might be missing that nuance, but I, I don't know. I feel like with the isometric perspective, it's really, I, I guess like this most cynical I can be about it is that it feels like the reason that it's not side scrolling or like from that side scrolling perspective is because it would be too tower folly. So instead it's isometric, but I think that the game kind of suffers as a result because it's almost like it's anti-human brain to like hit those arcs in real time, especially with elevation changes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll say the art design on it was fine. Uh, presentation in general seemed all right. Like, I, I don't mean to go over the top. It wasn't a bad game. It just wasn't anything that special, unfortunately, either. Yeah, that's, man, yeah, it's been yeah, a theme. It's like mediocre. Mm-hmm. I do like that we've, over the course of this, established your formula for a 9 out of 10 game, Ryan, where if it's got functional <laughs> online and you instantly queue, 9 out of yes. 10, no matter what. <laughs> that's that's all you need. Even if the game sucks, it's a 10. <laughs> uh, sweet. All right, so that's Arrowheads. Came out uh, a couple weeks ago. It is $15 on Steam. Uh, also, tell me real quick about Golf Story, please, Ryan. Yeah, Golf Story is essentially like the Camelot mario golf games especially the one for uh game boy color it's a switch exclusive Mm -hmm. from an australian developer (laughs) from an australian developer i don't remember the name of but essentially it's like uh, there you go Mm -hmm. it's a prototypical like rpg you you start with the quest to become like the greatest pro golfer at this one club to honor your father who took you golfing when you were a kid and like a fifth of the game is some really solid 2d golfing and then the other four fifths are like walking around talking to people you know getting quest lines from them solving really light puzzles hitting golf trick shots and stuff like that or you know completing a a hole of a golf course using uh unique criteria like there's one that i think is a good kind of vertical slice where you have one course and you talk to one guy and he's like the best way to play is to hit the green or sorry, to hit the fairway in the green. So you have to beat the course hitting only the fairway in the green. Then the next person you talk to is like, the rough is the best. It feels great under your feet. So then you have to beat the hole only hitting the rough in the green. And then the last one is like, or there's two more. One of them is like the deep rough and it's like the grass is even softer and you got to do that. And then the other one is like the bunkers are the best and you got to only finish the course by hitting the bunkers. So they get that guy. I just don't believe he's just, he's lying. Well, everyone's an idiot. (laughs) The fairway is obviously the best way. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So I, I won't speak for bear, but I've, I've put maybe three or four hours into it. You know, the more you, uh, the more you play, you get experience points. You can level up your power, your aim, your spin and, yeah, no. Do you like the leveling system? I like the way they did that. I think it's like it, 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 I do. it's perfect for the way the game works. Yeah, I like the, I like the way for people who don't know, it's not just like you know level power level. You know, I mean, it, literally, what I said is you level power, you level aim, et cetera, et cetera. But the way that it actually works is you level your power because that's like your primary stat, and the more you level that up, the worse your other stats get. So there's kind of a trade off uh, between. Like, do I want to just go for the furthest drive, but my shots are going to be way less accurate. I'll have less spin, et cetera, et cetera. Or do I want to put like two of my five points in power and then one into everything else to keep it so that it's like on the level. Yeah. So it's uh, it's, it's a cool way of handling the system. And I think the game is good. I wish it had a mini map so I could tell where the heck I'm going Mm. at any given moment. Yeah. And at the risk of being 180 million years old, I wish that there was more golf. (laughs) <laughs> I just like I know you can That's you can right. golf it, when you get to like a course you can golf whenever you want but yeah. sometimes there's like a quest you have to solve before they'll let you play the full course mm-hmm. so I'm like I really just I don't care about the turtles you know you gotta walk around and five like five baby turtles and then drop them into the pond I just want to golf I want to beat this person at golf get experience points and then get better so I can beat this guy no I'm I'm, I'm 100% with you dude like I, I really wish like right now I think we're both at about like the same part of the game where we've done so much RPG shit for this one golf course and it's just like please just let me play on your course like I don't yes. want to do any more <laughs> of this dumb shit anymore just let me play well and, like to... go ahead 
I just have a question: Is it would you would you call it like Stardew Valley with golf in it? Mm. Like have to leave the farming, that to bear because uh, like remove the farming, it. replace it with the golf. But you're learning to like uh, the stories of all the people who live around uh, the town and befriend them. That with kind of Stardew, thing. like there's so many other like intricate systems going on with Stardew, where I feel like that's an unfair comparison to so for really it's Stardew just Valley. Golfing, talking to people, and then golfing. Yeah, more. yeah, and okay, like gotcha. the only reason I feel that I'm still like so drawn and uh, uh, well, like the reason I'm still playing it primarily is a the golf is actually fun, and then b it's charming and it's funny. Like the 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 way that they have you interact with the characters. There's no VO, but the way that they do the dialogue bubbles is yeah. so unique. Like it's actually pretty funny how they like have tiny little text sometimes. The text bubbles will like move around and re represent like these crazy emotions they're doing. So it's it's kind of a So is it the undertale of golf games? Yes. <laughs> yes, 100%. Oh. <laughs> is Can the you get a golf horse? cart? You I don't know actually as of this point. You can once you beat the first course, you unlock the ability to run though, yeah. which was like a quality of life upgrade that I did not know yeah. I needed. Mm -hmm. I feel like I that it. would be the bicycle from Pokemon, as you get the golf yes. cart. Then, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> and but it's yeah, entirely like, possible because there's like there's an overworld map where I know there's yeah. like three places that are immediately inaccessible, and there's like a bridge too, where which could very well go to other courses that could be a ways away. So, it's a possibility. Just to give you an idea. Like, when you complete the first course and you get the ability to go to the world map and go to other courses, like, before you can golf at the second course, you have to buy a specific kind of uh, wedge. Mm. And then you have to talk to Indiana Jones, and Indiana Jones is like, hey, you can use that wedge to find treasure. And then you finish that quest, and then you recover this idol that they thought you stole, and then you give it back to them. And they're like, hey, you didn't steal the idol, but you still can't play the course because the turtles are upset. Mm -hmm. So then you got to go, like, gather these baby turtles and throw the turtles into the river. And then finally, there was about halfway through that quest line, I was like, I just want to golf. <laughs> but there is a quick, there is a quick mode, but I want, I want it to be 90% golf. 10% RPG. I want maybe a little more RPG, but I'm with okay, you. Like 50-50 like like, even. Yeah. But then like, I still want this. I don't want to just golf. I want the stats and the like the fact that you can like work your way up through the ladder and stuff. Like yeah, that I want to well. get into like competition and like go up against like the best players in the world. Exactly. Like, like I was, I was promised that. Come on, like I need that part of the game. But yeah, it's taken a little bit to really build up to that more interesting stuff. I think I'm hoping that it's getting get, gonna get more into it soon as well. But I also am entirely expecting it to just keep hitting us with this RPG stuff. I, I almost I feel like it's all a, a big tease, like the trading quest in uh, Link's Awakening, where like there's five hours of walking up to people and switching items, and oh, then at the end yeah. it's like a complete letdown. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have a I getting over get, like it. a sword upgrade or something in that, but like basically they set you up for your first tea, and then the game and credit. <laughs> 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 you do golf though and it's like yeah. it's like the mario kart of golfing in the sense that and everyone's gonna be like you mean mario golf but i actually <laughs> i i love camelot's game boy color mario golf i beat it i destroyed genius maxed out my stats as like a 12 or 13 year old i don't remember if it has the same stuff that golf story has where like the courses have like unique obstacles that are also shortcuts like mm -hmm. on the the turtle mm -hmm. course if you hit it into a specific spot, a turtle will like bounce out of the water and bounce your ball over a water hazard or something like that. Like, yeah. So it really, it is not like pure golf at all, but it's very satisfying. Also, chipping is like the easiest thing in the world and it makes you feel like a god. Cause yeah. it gives you a shot preview uh, and you just see, you're like, this is gonna hit the pin. As long as I don't like fall asleep while I'm hitting the power meter, this is gonna hit the pin and go in. And the sound is like, Dude, I I got a mega HD rumble. I got a mega eagle earlier today. I actually had an orgasm. It was it was incredible. Yeah, that, that's when you you get an eagle from like over a hundred yards away or mm -hmm. something like that. It was like a chip that's in from horrible. across a pond or something. It was fucking great. This makes me wish there was a Happy Gilmore RPG. <laughs> I would love that game. Yeah, live the life of happy. Get your grandma's money back. Like, oh man, <laughs> so good. It's basically this. Um. Yeah. No. It's it, it. Like I said, it's like really charming. It, it's just it's fun to see what the characters do next, and they're all they they've all got their own little appeal to them. So it's just it's it's a neat little 
side game on the Switch that I've been digging quite a bit recently. I'm probably going to play a lot more of it, too, because it's it's on the Switch, so it makes it a lot easier. Uh, yeah, Music anything else? is good, too. Yeah, like, it is. I, it's got, like, a kind of, like, a chip y sort of... I don't want to necessarily say it's got, like, an earthbound soundtrack, but sort of. I don't. Yeah. I don't necessarily think it's one of the all-time greats, but I was like, the music in this is good, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, it's fifteen bucks. It's ex- again it's exclusive to the Switch. And Forever? I don't know. Yeah, I was just gonna say I don't know if they're planning on porting it, but uh, at the moment only Switch. on the uh, Wii Shop Marketplace or whatever the heck the Switch version is called. <laughs> um, probably not the Wii Shop in hindsight, which is going away Shop. now. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the top seller when I downloaded it. Mm. At least. So, like, it's crushing it, oh. as far as I know, at least. That's, That's cool. cool. It's, a, like, a huge success story. Out of nowhere, literally, I woke up one day, and I was like, oh, a lot of sites reviewed this game called Golf Story, and they loved it. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's really, I had no idea that this game existed until, like, two weeks ago. Is that their first game? Let's find out. Sidebar Games. Uh, seems like it. Definitely seems like it. Yep. Uh, I think that's a safe bet. So, kudos to them. Well done. Uh, it's Golf Story. 15 bucks is on the Switch right now. And uh, we were going to do a l- another dive into Cuphead, but we're already kind of running short on time here. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and shoot the horn that into our September Game of the Month conversation. So uh, what we've been doing here on the show, every single month, uh, the beginning of the month, we-, we go over our favorite games from the previous month, and we give it our Game of the Month, and that's how that works. We're going to do Game of the Month <laughs> for September right now. Uh, we've got, man, this month was probably the hardest for me to choose. I don't know about you guys, but there were a lot of really good games that came out this month and a lot that I really enjoyed myself personally. So, uh, you know, I'll start. Fuck it. Why not? I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and start off this, this month. It's I, like, so let me give some honorable mentions. First of all, I got to say Cook, Serve, Delicious 2, played the hell out of it. Loved the first game, loved the second one. I don't think it did enough to merit my game of the month for it just because like while i do love it i think it had more to do with the fact that i just loved the first game so much and not so much to do with the fact that the sweet the sequel was all that much better or really even made a ton of improvements so i'm gonna steer away from that i'm gonna give it to cuphead and the the main reason there are several but the main reason is this is like unlike anything i've ever seen before as far as animation style goes in a game. Like, this is incredible. It looks so good. Not only does it look good, but, like, the gameplay is so satisfying as a result of how good it looks, not to mention the controls being so tight, right? Like, it's it's so cool to me to be able to participate in a 30s Disney cartoon. And they've really portrayed that so well to the point where, like, man, it blows me away. So, Cuphead gets mine. Game of the month for September. Uh, Mathis. Easy. Divinity Original Sin 2. I thought so. 100%, not even a question. Mm-hmm. That game is fucking incredible. And I would play it every single day if I had the opportunity to. It just does everything a CRPG should do and modernizes everything that was annoying about the old ones. It's not perfect. Its inventory system is still a little clunky and the crafting system is kind of annoying. But the combat and the story and the options are just so good. Mm-hmm. Ryan? Hundred percent agree with Mathis, with the, like the exercising the option for agreement that it wasn't even close. But I'm gonna add that Cuphead is probably gonna end up being like on my top five or top ten games of the year. Mm-hmm. So like Divinity, I think is that good in the sense that it is it, it's markedly better than Cuphead. I think for me at least to a degree that is surprising because I think Cuphead is also amazing. Yeah, it's just you you could. You could play it forever, and the more you learn about how dense everything in that game is, the more amazing of an accomplishment it becomes that they did it. Like, it, it's an unfathomable amount of work, not just in terms of, like, you know, the actual act of building the game, but, like, writing, voice acting, and, and even just planning that sort of stuff is is outrageous. Like, I... I I don't use this word too often, but it's like seriously like uh, an accomplishment. Yeah, I agree. People, I'm surprised. People think you hate the game, but you love it. It's like I love it. I just I hate. How does anyone think he hates it? Just because we play like wild and loose, I think Mm. a lot of the we miss things, we kill NPCs all the time. But that that's I think that's a testament to the game that we can play 
in a more chaotic manner with the with Ryan trying to be a good guy, me trying to be a bad guy, kill a bunch of NPCs that are supposed to be talked to and still progress and get rewarded for it. And, and the, the game adapts to you making that those is, decisions. That reminds me of like Scott adapting to our nonsense in D and D. Like that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, no, that's honestly. that's exactly what it, what it feels like. Is it feels like a DM is just being like, okay, well, this is what you did. Let's adapt. Yeah. Like the the maze, for example. For example, there's there's a there's, not to get into this fucking game again, but there's a there's a maze where every time you solve a room, you get a skull, and the skull will open the door, and then the skull will disintegrate. You only get it only gets one use. And we came mm-hmm. across. This lady who has this cursed fire that burns her forever and she can't die. Me and Ryan could not figure out how to get her on fire. Apparently, Ryan was supposed to make it rain on her and then bless the rain. And then it'll what in the, the world? Yeah, that's how we just killed her. We're like, we'll put you out, I promise. And we'll just like murder her. And that's it. <laughs> but then we like, well, the 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 goal is over there. If we won, we'd get through there and get to that building. How about I just teleport everybody across the gate, ignore the the little puzzle in the way, and go that way. And the game lets you. The game's like, you know what? You have a line of sight. Go ahead, teleport everybody over there and ignore the puzzle. Yeah, and it, and it rewards you for doing that. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, Nick, what do you got? Yeah, chat's like tripping over themselves to say that getting over it is going to be my September game of the month. <laughs> but I have to tell you, it only sort of came out today, and it's yeah. October sixth. Yeah, it doesn't and quite I qualify. Know if you consider this coming out, it's like in a bundle, no. maybe not out until December. But at best, if we want to consider it out in October. I want it to be the thing that beats Destiny 2 because that's just poetic justice, right? Like, that's amazing. Man in Cauldron beats Destiny 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When is Destiny getting a Battle Royale mode? There we go. Tomorrow, I'm sure. They'll announce it. Mm, That's Um, why they have a PC delay. So anyway, I want to say Cuphead's the obvious choice here, and I definitely think it could be the choice. But I think my preference skews slightly more to Hob. Sure, yeah. Uh, and I didn't really hit on Hob maybe as hard even last time when I talked about it as, as I probably should have. But I just really enjoyed that so far. I haven't finished it. I'm like eight hours into it. I'm going to finish it in the coming week. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm loving the way the puzzling's coming together. I'm loving the way the character advancement works. The, the clicky uh, technology, how it like locks in and things expand and rotate and do cool stuff. I just love all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So that with the art style, it's all really big thumbs up for me. I'm going to call it for Hob personally, but Cuphead, super big thumbs up there too. Nice. Cool. That's a good variety. I like it. All right. And that is going to do it for this episode of Roundtable Live as well. I want to go ahead and give myself a little bit of promotional time here. It's only three days left to get your House of Bears t-shirt. Teespring.com slash House of Bears. Go ahead and on over and check it out. Highly recommend it. Support Staple Master as well as myself. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And then, uh, of course, thank you very much for watching Roundtable Live as well. We very much appreciate your time here on twitch.tv slash roundtable podcast. Oh, God. Oh, God. Look at that strong <laughs> boy. Yeah. Look at that strong boy heaving that cat. He's he a, can climb him out. He's the strong boy. <laughs> He'll lift he's, you. He's like, what are you doing? Thank you very much for watching the show here on twitch.tv slash roundtable podcast. Airs every Friday. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. You can catch the show VOD over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash BearTaffy as well the next day. Uh, I want to thank our Patreon supporters over on patreon.com slash roundtable where you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month and you can keep us going here on Twitch. We appreciate that very much. I want to send a shout out to Julian Avelsgard, Jonathan Graham, Scratty119, Ricky Grist, Todd Buckley, Cowboy Chemist, Eric Schooley, Stephen Aoki, Metadata Studios, James Peed, Peter Sinison, John Kalchik, Ellis Spice, O Thomas Games BR, Jakar Sampson, Sehoa Kumar. I, literally every time I read this damn name, it's, I switch the H and the N. They are <laughs> indiscernible from one another. Jakar Sampson, Joseph Boss, Penn Gillette, Michael Bush Larson, Talks to Wall, TJ Majesty, Chaos, and if you ask me how I'm feeling, Theorist, he's so close. Colby Klein, Greenlight, Orin Saltzman, Brizzlebrit, Positron, Mythscare, Mediocrities, Justin, Simurfet, Logan Ray, I feel like I missed a new one here, actually. Let me make damn sure. No, I think we're good. Okay. Uh, yeah, there we go. Patreon.com slash roundtable. Want to send a sh- quick shout out, of course, to the Twitch subs as well today. Uh, Yummy, Bergland, Walt of the Earth, DeBarbie, Zio, Kodak, Piano Dude, Shanus, or uh, Shanus, Pulse Lane, Midori Sensei, and Detention. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting the show and being Cheers. here. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, we are. I, I got to keep checking in with y'all, but we're all going to be here next week, right? I think so. Yep. Mm hmm. Sweet. Okay. So we'll be back here October 13th, 2017. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much for joining us for another episode of Roundtable Live. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Later. Goodbye. Later.